All right. Hopefully we didn't break everything. I mean, I did break everything, but welcome to the Beyond Nemesis podcast. If you guys can see us right now. Can anybody I'm see us right now? It's almost there. Okay. Yeah. We can see you and me. That's what we need to see right now. Yeah. Just us two. Okay. okay. Cool. I think I'm like locked up yeah. or something on my monitor. You can see. Can you hear? We've been working on something because we have a guest joining us today. So, as spoiler, his name is Hooded Jester. That's why Jester is over there. He's going to be joining us to discuss the upcoming uh, Nemesis Dungeons and Dragons show that we're going to have here on the channel and Stranger Things 4, too. I think he's going to be part of that discussion, I would assume. Okay, thank God we're talking about that because I have so much to talk about. You finished it? Oh, yeah, I finished it. Okay, thank God. Because I I, I have a hard (laughs) time. Like knowing, like tiptoeing around, like, oh, what episode have you watched up to when you're discussing it with people who haven't finished something? You know, it's so frustrating. Yeah. No, like, no, for sure. Okay. Especially with us, we never talk, uh, generally ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just wait till like the next show, uh, show comes up. So, uh, no, I finished it last night at like 4 a.m. and I, uh, it was worth it. I stayed up till 2 30 in the morning, two nights in a row. And for my wife, that's like normal, but for me, it was like, like, I wanted to finish it, but I was just like, oh, my God. I have not done this since I was, like, mm-hmm. 10 years younger. <laughs> no, so. I feel you. Like, uh, we, I, I, I split up my days, too, because the first half, like, the first, I think, three episodes we watched, and we stayed up till about, like, maybe 2 in the morning. I was mm-hmm. like, all right, I got I to gotta work tomorrow. Um, worked, and then as soon as I finished work, we went to finish, like, the rest of the stuff, and we went to bed at, like, 4 a.m., mm-hmm. and I had, like, the largest migraine ever, and then I had to wake up again for work in, like, four more <laughs> hours. So, like, I woke up with that same migraine, migraine yeah. I went to bed with. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Worth it, though. I loved it. But we'll talk right. about that later. We'll talk about it later. Sounds good. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, we got a few things today. It might be a short show. Happy Memorial Day, by the way. And, Happy uh, Memorial Day. Thank you to everybody who is either actively serving or, you know, those of you who know people who have lost their lives in, uh, in active service. That's what one out right now for the boys. I'm just Memorial I'm just Day is technically about. It's kind of a somber holiday, really, but it's there for a reason. Um, the ultimate sacrifice. Um, so if anyway, I find out your clothes on Memorial Day. By the way, any business out there, I'm finding you and I'm gonna open up your doors for you. There's no reason you can be closed right now. My my job was closed today. <laughs> I don't. You know you don't do like the stuff that I need to walk into as a store for though. So you're fine. You get the public transportation. Pass. I mean, people do kind. Of- <laughs> Do kind of yeah, need that. Their, they could use their legs. This is the one day they need to use their legs to I get to work. Use their, their bicycle, their scooter, their skateboard, whatever. Um. Anyway, so we're in that. We're basically into E3. Uh, June is tomorrow. June? No, there's tomorrow's the thirty first, right? Tomorrow's thirty first, but more or less, I mean, like first week of June is right. And this week, so. So the first, the first non E3 conferences this week, and then a whole bunch are coming up in the next. I'd say ten days. We've got. A Sony State of Play this week. Next week, you have Jeff Keighley's uh, Summer... What's he called? Summer Game Fest, I think, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Summer Game Fest. And then we've got uh, Microsoft and Bethesda. A whole bunch of conferences happening. So I thought it would be fun. We've, we've talked about what we wanted uh, before. We had a little segment. But I thought it would be fun to put Jedi on the spot. And uh, I put together a little list of games that are rumored, may or may not be at, at E3. When I say little, I mean like two, two Google Doc pages long. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through them and then Jadai and I are going to predict. Will it be there? Yes or no? I may predict some of them, but if I put it on here, it's probably because there's a good chance. It's if Mayor does predict them and it comes true, we will definitely see it on his Twitter. Yep. <laughs> I'll call it. <laughs> but now you're going to have you're going to be able to call them all now, too, because you're on record. So like, like oh, I call this one. I'm just gonna absolutely. I'm just gonna like full now. Just give you like incorrect and just lame answers now. <laughs> Every single round, the exact opposite answer. So I don't. I think we'll start with Sony. Um, they're the first one to go. Technically, they go Thursday, and their conference. Again, I I don't really like what uh, Jim Ryan has been doing with Sony, but anyway, their conference is 30 minutes long, which is not really that long. It's a 30 minute yeah, state fine. of play. So, not saying that the games that will will be there won't be amazing, but they can only fit so much into 30 minutes. Whereas mm-hmm. by comparison, Microsoft is, uh, they're usually over 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, and well, I mean, like th- this is also a state of play too. This yeah. is usually like 
something that they just randomly throw out into the void mm -hmm. uh, on a on a Tuesday announcement, like most companies. So they're kind of like doing the Nintendo move, where they're just like not really putting a lot of effort into like their uh, like their production and like their announcements. Nintendo's side of things. had some really hype Nintendo directs, though. Like sometimes Nintendo brings like the heat in those like little thirty minute. It's just like it's know. a hit or miss sometimes, yeah. though. It and is it's, hit, it's or hit or miss. miss. Like a. Uh, I remember like before the Pokemon one and then I think the most recent one where they had like Kirby on there and Metroid and no, it was just actually Kirby's Forgotten Land. Like that mm -hmm. was like the, a pretty good one, but the ones before that were pretty lame. I'm not Sony's gonna lie. had some, a lot of pretty lame ones to be honest with you, but I, the last one where they thought where we thought we were going to get a uh, dino crisis. Sony has we been so crisis. quiet for the past few years with these things and like not hyping things up that I feel like now would be a good time to bring it for sure. So hopefully, yeah. you know, 30 minutes, but hopefully it's like, seven or eight really strong you know two minute trailers or whatever two three minute trailers and announcements so maybe a weird year though like no no real authentic e3 experience I mean, it's yeah, all gone like no e3 i mean jeff Keeley's thing will be the closest because that's like a full-scale multi-platform yeah. production yeah which, but which... Like almost 20 years now we know we've had we've had e3 yeah and like now it's officially gone and my heart is broken and is sad and I shall cry at night to think about it and father and why it, it will never come back. It will be interesting to see how many of these companies, like for example, Sony and Microsoft, they have their own shows, but will they save like something or some things for Jeff Keighley's show? And I personally think the answer might be yes, because yeah. there'll be a lot of I people think, watching. I think um, somebody from like the production team on Xbox and Twitter said that they're actually going to try and focus a little bit more on first party and let Summer Game Fest have a lot more AAA stuff. Makes um, sense, which does make sense. But I remember this happened like a couple of years ago, where Phil Spencer is just like, we get a lot of heat for not showing enough like exclusives on our platform. That they're like, it's a really big deal to have these third parties on our platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Elden Ring did really good on Xbox because it was like announced on the Xbox, and it's been yeah. like part of the marketing for Xbox almost almost exclusively. Well, I um, think so. It's just like AAA is matter to, to these consoles, no matter yeah. what kind of showcasing yeah. it is. And there's a lot of. Uh... I don't want to say indie games, but kind of smaller games that really, really, they they become they, they, known because they get shown on uh, a Microsoft or a Sony stage, for example. You know, or even like an Ubisoft game or or an EA game. You know, like those publishers really appreciate having that platform where where all okay, our game is being announced and it's going to be shown in front of all these people. Like mm -hmm. that's pretty important. Like games can be yeah. maker. They can be. I mean, Dead Island is a game. Remember when that E3 trailer came out? absolutely garbage game but because the announcement was in front of like so many people i think it was at the game awards or something and it was the slow people motion like, zombie falling yeah. out the window people like it was, hyped little, it up. No, it was the little girl falling out the window yeah there you like, go there you out go. the window it was a con no, that was a pretty controversial trailer though like people yeah. were like oh my god you don't do this with video games right like, but I that made that, that game like that that game was made by the announcement like literally yeah no 100 percent Oh man, and it's insane because people actually really liked Dead Island, which is I did not like it at all. It was such a bad game. Uh, but like, wait, I, uh, I mean, right. there's, there's I, I think people who like use Facebook exclusively um, like <laughs> Dead Island. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. They've been developing a sequel for like 12 years now, so there must, you know, however, however many developers second, were on that team, let's say 127 people made that game. There's at least 127 people that like Dead Island. So. No, 100%. I mean, like, this Dead Island 2 trailer, though, was actually pretty hype, to be honest. Yeah. I like that one. That was that one was kind of funny. It was goofy. Is Dead Island 2 going to be it? Not E3 on the Sony stage? That wasn't on my list, but maybe it will show up at Summer Game Pass. So. Dying Light is the new Dead Island. It really is, but, like, it's so much better in every single conceivable way. Still love the first one. Okay, your All list. Right. You ready to go? We're going to oh, start with go. Sony. I don't know how many of these will be curveballs, but uh, Twisted Metal Reboot. No. Sony. No? No. No. Jade Eyes, no. The Last of Us Remake. Yes. Releasing this year, by the way. Yes. Yep. Rumor. A trailer for The Last of Us HBO series. Mm, I don't think they'll do that, no. no. I think they'll let HBO do that. Spider-Man 2. Is that supposed to come out this year? I don't know, actually. I don't remember. That's that's a tough one right there. I, I'd imagine that it might be there. I don't think it's coming yeah. out this year, though. I think it will be. <clears throat> SOCOM reboot by Guerrilla Games. That'd be fun to see. I would actually like to see that. Uh, so would will I. it be there? 
also a rumor, though, right? Like, yeah, it's very much term. a rumor. I, so a lot of these games I put in there for spicy rumors. I, I'm going to say no to that one. Okay. I'm going to say no to that one. Killzone VR, which is a recent rumor. Yes, I think that will be there. There's definitely going to be a VR something there. Which? But there, whether it's Killzone or something else, I don't know. I'm going to go on a tangent. Sony recently said I think they have 30 games for PSVR 2. Um, my personal opinion, PSVR 2 is a massive waste of their resources, but I guess we could get into that some other day. Um, Death Stranding 2. I think an announcement trailer will be there, yeah. Bungie's next game. No. It's supposed to be 2024 or 2025 release. And they've been hyping up how Bungie is going to lead the way for their games as a service. I'm going to say no to that one. I don't okay. think that they'll have another game, but they actually might have Destiny like content to promote for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's an easy one. Blue Point's next game, which is rumored to be, has been rumored forever that it's uh, either a Bloodborne remaster, remake, whatever so if i mean i want to touch on something like that, that real quick remember that that bloodborne thing you shared uh you shared with us today <laughs> Maz I was shared it not me i want to be i, 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 no, I no, choose my Maz. sources carefully i want to i want to be a, i was the one who dispelled the room to be fair that was a pretty like like the twitter at didn't even look remotely different yeah, and like it's on a small it was, screen it was, so yeah. i didn't like think of it immediately <laughs> I, I was like oh this is bell yeah he's always usually really good with these kinds of things um but uh as far as that, no, I don't think so. What do you think, Blue Blue Point? You have a prediction for what Blue Point's next game is, or do you think it'll be there, whether it's Bloodborne or not? I don't even know what what has Blue Point done in the past besides Blue Point. The, the people who made remastered. Demon Souls, they remastered Shadows of the Colossus. Uh, they're basically Sony's remaster team. Yeah, like they remaster games usually. I think they did enough. Uh, did they do Medieval? Did they remake Medieval? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they'll be there with anything. Okay. Uh, Silent Hill. Ooh, that one's been pretty big, actually. I think it'll be there. Okay. Yeah, I think I think Silent Hill, if not at PlayStation, it'll be somewhere announced somewhere this year. So I have uh, a this, feeling this it'll be on the Sony stage. I I, I think could it makes be, no sense. Could could be uh game festival, but I have a feeling it'll yeah. be Sony. But we'll see. I think it makes no sense for sure. Uh. Don't forget the Silent Hill creator and uh, music composer. He announced his new game about a year ago. They're making a new franchise. I forget what it was called, but it looks bizarre. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. Yeah, I, I think it just has to be there in some sort of fashion. I don't think they'll... If anything, I'm pretty sure they'll just like have the announcement for it, but I'd imagine that Final Fantasy XVI will probably be there at a larger capacity. Okay. I predicted this one to be absent on purpose but i put it on here anyway naughty dogs multiplayer game as a service i don't think it'll be there mm -mm, i don't think so i mean like with all the big titles we just threw out there especially when it comes to the well, naughty you said dog no game. to like eight out of ten of them so <laughs> oh i know but i mean it's also playstation at the same time like yeah. who knows what else they're gonna be throwing on that screen yeah uh they could also i mean like returnal's also going to pc they'll probably yep. have like some sort of announcement to say hey returnal's coming to pc oh um Modern Warfare 2 is basically confirmed to be during their show as well. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Which will get like five minutes probably out of the 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm actually pretty stoked for Modern Warfare 2. I'm not going to lie. I am too. I'm looking. I mean, I, in fairness, I get excited and hope and hope that Call of Duty will make a comeback every year. And it usually does. <laughs> does wasn't, it, Vincent but... pa wasn't Vincent Paula uh, back uh, for this game, actually? He, or He's on he... Battlefield. He's on Battlefield, okay. Yeah. I did see but something Infinity that he back, back to Activision on. for something though. Uh, maybe not like as a, like a not maybe not as like a long term employee, but maybe as like a contractor or something like that to kind of like work on top of it. This was like years ago though. I think it was yeah. a little bit before Vanguard. Maybe it's already done. So, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's maybe he's been done and he just kind of liked the direction. He pulled a um, what's his name from from Bioware, Casey Hudson. Just oh yeah. Casey. He's like, hey, I am the god and I am gone. I'll come back. I'll be here for a year, then I'll be gone for a year. Yeah. I'm um, gonna go work on another obscure project. That's everything I had for Sony. Uh, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Predictions that, that come to my my prediction is they're gonna waste ten minutes on PSVR two. I don't think they're gonna waste that much time. They'll probably give us like a solid like five minutes of it, but mm, we'll see. Um, I get the feeling they're probably gonna hype up some like new 
um, some more like their PlayStation software stuff, like a uh, like PS Now or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that'd maybe, be good. Honestly, Grand Theft Auto Six. I think it'll be there. That's... I think it's. <sighs> you see how close they are right now, and they've already wasted. I'm not gonna say what I think that looks like uh, <laughs> out loud, but um, no, I mean like it makes a lot of sense. I didn't like, want to spill had, it all over myself. We've had GTA Five like on like a lot of major like state of plays for PlayStation. I don't think it's twisted to think that Grand Theft Auto Six would be there. It could be. They'll probably show some dumbass 45 second trailer, which they won't show actually anything of the game, and uh, that'll be it. And everybody will go through the roof because it's GTA everybody's gonna 6. have the rumors. You're gonna be able to travel between San Andreas. Uh, and Vice City, Vice and City, and Cuba. Like, they're gonna have like Liberty all those City. crazy, outrageous rumors. <laughs> I'll still never forget, like, and it's kind of weird that we're here now, but people were saying like, yeah, the next Halo, we're gonna be able to travel all over the Halo ring, and I'm just like, that doesn't sound real. I was, I was like, who, who would, who would want to do that anyways? Yeah, yeah, no, it, you'd be flying in a Hornet for like two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, but I mean, like, we technically somewhat have a little slice of that life now in Halo Infinite. But uh, I mean, those were rumors like back on the 360 days. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah. no, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, if there, I do think one thing will show up there, and I think it's the next Bioshock game. I'm I think Sony? the next Bioshock game will pop there. Yeah. Why Sony? Why why do you associate it with Sony? As opposed like to like Sony's Summer always, Game Fest or. I feel like Sony's always had some sort of like really close relationship to the IP. I mean, yeah. like Bioshock One was first an Xbox 360 exclusive, and then it eventually made its way to PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And then like after that, like it's just been Bioshock on PlayStation. Like PlayStation really wants to keep that title as like a uh, as its home, and uh, we've seen that with like. It could Bioshock have the marketing Infinite. rights. I mean, just have the marketing rights. Yeah, like I think the announcement would be there, and if there's anything that it does. It's just the announcement for it. Maybe we'll just get like a title, a CGI, a CGI title or something like that. Who I knows? do but really I like, like the rumors around that game. The rumors are that it's set in like, like Antarctica or something, like a like a society that's in like Antarctica, like that's like totally isolated, you know, on a very. Maz cold... is trolling, by the way. Maz is trolling. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Twisted Me- Twisted Metal supposedly being rebooted, and uh, I really wish there would be a new Resistance game, but I highly doubt that there's ever going to be anytime soon that's that's a dream of mine i always thought like resistance games were just like so boring and titled but like they looked fantastic for its time for it, had, like, way ahead of its time graphically they had that yeah. and they had that the, the insomniac guns like you know they're just like really yeah. creative right. and like, awesome like, really gun yeah yeah i don't right. know i mean like insomniac's obviously off to bigger and better things these days anyways <sighs> those are fighting words making making I don't know, man. dog Spider-Man, trash and Clay- Wolverine? Ratchet, give me Wolverine, I'll give you. Sunset oh. Overdrive was pretty 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 Sunset Overdrive too. was awesome, and I'm mad that it's never That's... gonna get a sequel. Oh yeah, I'm super sad about that. I mean, like honestly, it feels like it doesn't it, it's a big universe already, like within it, but like, dude, such a such an understanding. Sony game does have people. the rights to that. They do now, yeah. They do. But oh god, it's such a good game. I wish that game would get like a FPS boost or something like that on Xbox, because I would definitely replay it's it. It's on PC. Yeah, it's on PC. It's gotta be. It's Let's a. Fir- it's, it was Xbox. published by Microsoft, so it's gotta be. Now to wait five minutes for the Xbox app. I on agree PC with Mass. Was... Are you ready to do Microsoft? Uh, okay, Xbox app, you're doing great. Here we go. <laughs> God, this app sunset. Sunset over the time. Is it on there? I mean, it's not popping up in like the query, so I, I don't know if it's the app or if it's just not inside of it. Probably the app. The yeah. <laughs> Play with game. Oh, yep, it's on Game Pass for PC. Cool. I actually just might replay it on PC then. Ready for Microsoft? All right. Am I ready for Microsoft? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Years of War, Marcus Phoenix Collection. <laughs> Easy. One. I think. I think it's true. Yeah. I think it's real. Yeah. I've seen like a lot of other rumors pop up saying that like judgment will not be in the collection, which I've I do think that. is a mistake. But like at the same time, well, if it's no Marcus really Phoenix missing. collection. Oh, well, I mean, ODST is in there. Halo Reach is in MCC as well. That's true. But those those were added as flavors yeah. to extend the, the life of the I game. I really feel like I don't know if you do a collection. I feel like only putting three games in there is like I don't know. Bioshock, Bioshock Two, Bioshock infinite and then dark knight or no no uh, arkham asylum arkham city arkham knight 
I feel like three is like a pretty standard kind of collection. Of I don't know. Rare collection. Let's go down that 50 game list yeah, right there. there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the best game of which is by grabbed way. by the ghoulies, by the way. <laughs> that, that's a game that needs to come to... Uh, it's underrated. To, to, P, to PC, actually. Rare, rare the only reason people didn't like grab by the ghoulies was because it didn't have a jump. Everybody got so bent out of shape that you couldn't jump. All right, let's continue. Contraband from Avalanche. You know, I don't even know what the hell that game is. Like, I feel like it has to be there to some capacity, so yes. <laughs> it's like a smuggling game, I think. It's like a game uh, as a service, like smuggling and like uh, heists. Like a payday heist game? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. But, but Avalanche, like big set pieces and, you know, crazy yeah. tornadoes at the same time. And, you know, that's how I'm imagining it. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Uncharted, I think, great collection, three games too, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. That's because, the, never mind. Uh, Redfall. Yes, it has to be there after the delay. It this needs to, it needs to show gameplay. It will. This one's bra a brain dead. Yes, I'm, I shouldn't even put it on there, but Starfield. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine that they're probably either going to start show with Starfield for the Bethesda half of things, mm -hmm. or they're going to end it with Starfield. Yeah. Uh, but at the same right. time, like Bethesda's probably got like so much cooking under like under covers right now. They've probably got like Wolfenstein three ready to be announced here. They've got Doom eternally two maybe maybe um i mean they've got those two titles for sure they've got to show something fallout i feel like fallout is at bethesda conferences every single year and i'm dreading the fact that we're gonna see elder scrolls online there um are we i don't waste, think they'll like, waste time on elder time. scrolls online i, I really always don't. waste time on an eso bro and i hate i, I love i want to play that game so badly but it plays like I such a stupid like free-to-play mmo i don't like it <laughs> so annoying plus there's no cute like anime characters that you could create in there which is such a missed, missed opportunity instead i'm over here looking at Ar argonian pale <laughs> moving on <laughs> halo infinite battle royale i think that will be there okay Me too. i think that will be there i also think halo the endless will be there too i think yeah. there's going to be a big piece for halo in there yeah if I were them, I would open the show with Halo Infinite Battle Royale, to be honest with you. They have a 10-year plan. Every year, they have to show Halo yeah. at this conference, and it's it's got to be there. Here's a curveball. Horror game from Kojima Productions. No, I don't nope. think that's going to happen. Mm -mm. It's... I think he's just been working. I think he's too busy with Death Stranding, too. He confirmed he's got two games. Two games, one smaller, one bigger. Mm. Bigger is obviously probably Death Stranding, too. Significantly, yeah. I mean, Google uh, Google dumped. This is like confirmed. Google had an exclusive Kojima game. They didn't say what genre, and then they 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 uh they had it like deal done, and they cut it because Stadia scaled down. I don't know. I, I now's don't think the it time if it's gonna if it's gonna exist. If it, if it's still a thing, I feel like now's the time. We'll see. I don't think it's going to be there. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I say I it will. Weird, I say it will. I disagree. Uh, here's one for you. Is Id's next game Doom Eternally? <laughs> or, or is it the Quake reboot? God, I hope it's not a Quake reboot. I don't care I how old you are. I hope that God it's not. I, I hope it, it just is. needs to be Wolfenstein 3 at this point. Well, that'd be Machine. Oh, that's true. You're right, Machine. Um, uh, I, I you think, think Wolfenstein if, 3 is going to be two, there? I think Wolfenstein 3 is going to be there. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. But, you know, I'm pretty sure you're going to segue into the next game. But we'll, let me just answer, like, the ID game. I'm pretty sure it'll probably be the Quake reboot. I mean, I don't really care much for the Quake reboot. I'll definitely play it. Yeah. Because I've never had the experience, like, growing I, up with Quake. I never had PC. They just, tasty. They just remastered the OG Quake. And I feel like they did that for a reason. Um, and I also... I love I love Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal with every freaking inch of my heart. Like those are two of my favorite games of the past decade for sure. But they pushed that formula so far in Doom Eternal, and they did two DLCs. I just don't know how much further they like can push it at this very moment. So I feel like if they step away, do a Quake reboot, and then come back to Doom in you know five years as technology has you know that that's my what I hope. Yeah. Indiana Jones. 
Yeah, that's definitely my machine game. Okay. Yeah. Exclusive or not? Big Xbox debate. <laughs> I mean, we were just we were just that we both. Here, here, here's blank, what I bro. here's what I think about whether it's Xbox exclusive or not. Who gives a fly? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, if I were them, I would do multi-platform. I mean, literally make you more money. Why would yeah. you? It's Indiana Jones. Yeah. I, God, I, do do I care? No, not one one yeah. bit. If they it's, if they give this cool, game more though. than a sixty second trailer, I will be pissed that they're wasting that much time. I don't know. I mean, like, here's the thing, though. I mean, like, to play devil's advocate, I mean, does it really matter to them if it goes to? playstation at this point because like at the same time if it's going to run on the switch it's going to be like a huge downgrade obviously yeah. um so i don't think that they're going to invest in that kind of technology or that development for that technology yeah. and they have three platforms in the ecosystem they've got xbox clearly they're going to have it's probably going to be on previous gen xboxes also um so. new gen uh so that's consoles and then we've got pc obviously for game pass yeah. and People still keep counting out like mobile for cloud streaming and stuff like that. Yeah. I think there's still a big market right there that's still untapped because it's just like I don't think it's really proven to be something yeah. worth like investing into. But you know, we'll see. I mean, yeah. if it hits PlayStation, I think it's a good de- idea for idea for them. Like yeah. it's going to make them more money. But regardless, I think they're going to do really well with this, even if it's an exclusive game. We'll see. Uh, Perfect Dark. It's been announced for what two years now or three years? uh Two, I, think. I think a year was it not it wasn't last year it was the year before pretty sure it last year no i feel yeah. like it was last year i'm pretty sure it was two years ago because i had to announce the developer first they had to announce the initiative uh are you looking it up yeah i'm looking it up on my okay phone it looks like it was two years ago it's 2020 okay i it's been Actually. moved to crystal dynamics too which is interesting so that what i feel like no they way. got it you didn't hear that no. Yeah, Crystal Dynamics has been brought on as like the lead developer, which it never made sense to me because the initiative is like a startup, like like literally. Like, I'm not saying they're not talented, but they don't have like a huge team to make like a quadruple it's A. It's a startup of like really big people well, sure. in that game, you know. But a lot of people have left the initiative already too, because it's whatever. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, like, I mean, we look at people leaving studios, and it's just like we're, we're used to seeing that. It happens all the time. So perfect dark. Yes or no? You gotta say. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Fable. That's also been announced for two years. I'm just gonna say yes. I feel like they gotta show it. They gotta gotta show show it. Even if it's a CG trailer again, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Announce some features. And and show us something. Yeah. No, one hundred percent agree. Needs to be there. Forza. I'm not even gonna. Forza will be there. I mean. Yeah. Motorsport will definitely be there. It's gonna be that free. It's gonna be their free to play version too and okay. that thing's gonna absolutely sell i mean it's pretty much the the genre leading game at this point so i mean like i i, I really hope forza like motorsport kind of tones down the accessibility of it and i'm not saying it needs to be taken away from people who can't play it it is car games are even hard for people who have like disability or who have like a hard time playing like playing racers in general but mm-hmm. like we've got like two other racers that are just blowing it out of the park whenever it comes to actual real real racing games like i racing or uh, i think that's what it's called ridiculously good game my knowledge of that um, genre is very very minimal I, I actually learned about it most recently like that and like formula racing are just like ridiculously good like even the like racers for from formula play those games to practice without actually getting on the track because it's mm-hmm. that close to the real thing. Um, and I learned that from TikTok, so thanks, TikTok. <laughs> Some guy was talking crap. He's like, if you think you're good at Forza Horizon on the wheel, you think you're a good driver because you drive well in that game. He's like, you're an idiot. That game is an arcade game. Like, you do not... Those two games, like, that game is not a, it's not a racing game. It's a, it's an arcade game. And I was right. like, damn. He, he right, though. Uh, now we're getting into some good ones. Uh, also announced two years ago, I believe, avowed from Obsidian. I think that will be there. Yeah. I think, I think, I, I've heard a rumor, and I, and I can't say that I believe it yet or not, but I've heard a rumor that that's very far along, and that they hope to slide that in at the end of this year instead of Starfield, which I would still be cool. surprised, but if, I mean, hey, you never know. Yeah, I, no, I do I think they'll show it. I do think they'll yeah, show it. I think it's been three years now, actually. I have been. I feel like a Val has been announced for a, a while ago. Hellblade 2. Yes. Yeah. I think Hellblade 2 is going to be there. 
Double Fine's Ooh. next game, which there's a recent rumor that it's a Banjo Kazooie Banjo remaster. Game? I don't so, believe that. I don't believe. I don't that. believe that either. But I want that to be true so badly. That'd be dope as hell. You but think Double Tim Fine will be there? Right? Huh? You think Double Fine will be there? I think they have to be. They, I mean, like they get a lot of creative freedom though for Kai, yeah, clearly. <laughs> they just released Psychonauts so, two last year, and it was basically considered like a masterpiece. So. Yeah, but it, it also took a very long time in development yeah. hell uh, from like production and money yeah. and stuff like that. So they, I don't know if like Tim Schafer, right? He gets yeah. like a huge, yeah. they a don't, huge like pass. That was the first like AAA game that they've made in like a decade too. I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if the next like game or two from Double Fine, we're, we're going back to more of their small like experimental style games. And I don't mean AAA by quality, I mean scope. Mm hmm. Because for a while, Double Fine was like, like Iron Brigade stacking. Uh, there was a couple others that they put out there, more like you know, small, smaller scale games. Mm -hmm. No, I get you. Brutal Legend. I want that. To <laughs> that was why they so stopped bad. making AAA le games. <laughs> it's Brutal Legend. Jack Black was too expensive. Yeah. Well, all the, all, the, all the licensing for all those heavy metal songs must have cost a fortune. I'm I thought the sure game was underrated. Into that, though. Yeah, one hundred percent is underrated. That that thing was a, as usual from from Double Fine, just ahead of its time. Yeah. Uh, com sense, you know, compulsion no games yeah. next game. Um, I've seen some rumors. Yeah, that it's going to be there. Okay. I think it makes sense for it to be there. The dragon-based RPG from IO, the developers of Hitman, basically confirmed at this point. But we talked about this official. last last podcast too. Yeah. I'm not familiar with it, so I mean, I only have a yes or no for that. Um, I have a, a another. I, I didn't want to. How much do you think? I have a, a feeling that at least one of of these two games will be there, despite because there's questions. How much does Activision and Microsoft want to lean into that deal, even though mm -hmm. it's not done? Yeah. I do think. I think Diablo Four could be there because uh, I believe it debuted on Microsoft Stage or no Diablo Two Resurrected. I think debuted during. Microsoft's E3 conference last year. And that was before the deal. Uh, I wish we would get I wish we would get Unreal, a new Unreal yeah. tournament. I really do. Yeah, yeah, it was on the Xbox reveal yeah. stage at last year at E3, you're right. It was on I mean, like I think it makes sense. Uh what was Diablo what was Diablo 3 announced on? Was that like at BlizzCon or something like that? Oh yeah, I'm sure. But Blizzard's been moving away from doing their own announcements. Like well, BlizzCon didn't even happen last year. Um, well, BlizzCon didn't happen for COVID reasons, though. Yeah, oh, BlizzCon, uh, well, kind of. They, they, they were in the middle of that giant scandal, like several giant uh, scandals. Yeah. And they kind of knew that if they put together like a big, like, hurrah, Blizzard party, that it was going to be like a massive bad look. So, so yeah, COVID reasons, guys. COVID reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think either Diablo 4 or Overwatch 2 will be on their stage. Maybe Overwatch 2 release date? Maybe Diablo 4 release date? I don't know. It's supposed to be Diablo 2023. Diablo 4 would be faster. I think Diablo 4 will get a, be uh, a faster uh, announcement than Overwatch 2 will. I, think, I, get you, I would guarantee anything that Overwatch 2 is going to get another soft release date, a soft launch. Yeah. Uh, so much like the last one where it's just like, they're just going to release it and just say 1.0 is now out. I think that that's yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because they also said that they're going to be doing um, their PVE beta as well yeah. uh, in the coming months. So Bad I'm pretty idea. sure it's just going to soft launch it. Uh, anyway. But Diablo 4, I mean, you've got Rod Ferguson over there. He's yeah. obviously a Microsoft employee almost again. <laughs> plus Mikey <laughs> um, Barra, but, um, a former yeah, VP of X Xbox. I wonder if like either one of them are just going to be in charge of the entire division for Blizzard whenever that, acquire, uh, when that acquisition goes through. It would make sense to put like Mikey Barra there, though. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's the a, CEO he's a, of Blizzard now, period, or president. I think they changed it to president. They changed it to president, yeah. Um, Stranger Things VR. Um, Stranger Things VR. I, I predicted two games to be absent. Uh, you tell me if you agree or disagree. Yeah. Everwild from Rare. <laughs> and State of Decay 3. Yeah, I think those are pretty pretty off the table. I've here. heard both are in development hell, even though they've been announced for like three years. I don't think you're gonna. I've heard the Everwild. This is no joke. This is like from credible sources. And the same thing happened with Sea of Thieves, and it actually ended up being a major success, obviously. 
I've heard that the development of Everwild has like no direction and they've changed what type of game it is. Like literally changed like its genre like three times. Yeah. <laughs> because they're like one day it's a Zelda game, the next day it's a Pokemon game, the next day it's like a survival game. Like they don't know what they're doing with it. Yeah, no, I think I, I think I've seen something similar to it. You probably know more about it than I do, but I've definitely seen that Everwild's been through too many reiterations and reincarnations into anime hell, basically. Rare. Rare just drives me nuts. They used to be like such an ace in the hole developer, and now I just feel like I feel like without Nintendo telling them what to do, I think creative freedom has actually like killed Rare. Like, well, a lot of those people aren't even there anymore. Well, either. that too, that too. But I think they're obviously still a super high quality developer. I mean, look at Sea of Thieves. But I, I think like when they were managed by Nintendo, Nintendo literally just said, "Hey, make this," and Miyamoto would come over and be like, "No, don't do this." do this like i feel like that really really worked but yeah yeah for sure I, I think that like whenever it came to like rare though like clearly there was a huge like drop off and disconnect once like they made viva pinata um uh, despite it being actually i don't super know why awesome they game. haven't doubled down on that franchise dude. Dude, it's a small scale it probably takes 50 people to make that game like dude i i would love for viva pinata to come back it's tomorrow. their animal crossing like it's it's, it's so good it, it's so easy like you, know, you, you can what make it for mobile, like too. Pinata, you remember what they did with Viva Pinata, like, two and stuff? They like, had, like, cards with, like, the camera that they were trying my to sell. My college like, roommate. Two. That camera was $120, by the way. My college stupid. my college roommate, who was, like, a, a a basketball player in high school and college and, like, you know, played, like, Gears of War and, like, like you know, like, kind of came from the same place as I did, but he was even more, like, rugged farmer uh, background. He played Viva Pinata to to the fullest extent, earned every achievement. I was I was like, "What are you so playing good. over there?" But like, the more I watched it, I was like, "This is like a major like hit. Like they they have something yeah. going here, you know." Like, but they, Viva they, Pinata, I don't know why they honestly, abandoned it. It seems like an easy win. Overshadowed, honestly, overshadowed by Halo Three and Fable and the Gears of War. That's what happened to Viva Pinata. All right, such a such an accessible game up to it. the market of video games at a time there was just overshadowed by like fantasy and shooters that's what happened viva pinata is go to this hell viva pinata 2 was such a huge step up from viva pinata 1 if they came out with viva pinata 3 i will spend stupid money on that they should if just they do viva pinata online go to they, your friend's yeah, yeah, farm can. do it for mobile it's so easy but ten set make it viva pinata is a survival light mode yeah exactly there's, there's so many things you could play concepts that became bigger there Anyway, uh, anything else for Microsoft? I don't, get, I don't think we're gonna get any Elder Scrolls. Me, no, no. I don't think we're gonna get any Elder Scrolls. I think we're like think two years that... away from Elder Scrolls, honestly, at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that uh, Bethesda is also trying to follow what Microsoft has been trying to probably do with like Halo, which is always have a yearly updated game with new yeah. content each year that you can talk about, hype up, and resell. Which in this case, we're gonna get Fallout seventy six. Um, I've actually been missing Fallout Shelter, weirdly enough. That was actually a super I've heard awesome. People game. say good things about that. Dude, it's such a good game. Like, I was the biggest Fallout like dweeb, dude. I have Jeez. a lot of reservations <laughs> about Fallout 4, but like Fallout Fallout Shelter was like really good hype. There was just that time of like Xbox One PS4 era where it's just like, when is Fallout coming out? When is Fallout? It's been years. It like and then they kind of like reworked it to be like this very consumer friendly looking like product and I like it, but I definitely didn't like Fallout 4 as much as I did. So who praying that Avowed gets like this green light to be launched later this year so that way we can play something awesome. Move on and oh. hopefully for the love of God get Fallout New Vegas too. I, I, I forgot Goldeneye, which is virtually confirmed to be there as well. The Goldeneye remaster, remake, whatever they call it. Yeah. And that will be multi platform. Um I don't think I have anything else really as far as predictions for Microsoft. I think that's pretty much it. Maz, you couldn't even tell me what Hexen 1 and 2 was. Days Gone is confirmed to be a dead franchise. Hey, yeah. The, the direct the director quit because the sequel did it. not get greenlit and he left. Yes. Yeah. They're doing something else now, which I hope is a siphon filter reboot, but it's not. Guaranteed. I kind of feel bad for that studio because it. I don't think that a lot of people really get to talk about what happens inside of studios at Sony studio stuff. Like it really doesn't happen a lot. 
the most that we've gotten is probably the Days Gone stuff, and as well as like The Last of Us Two. Um, I don't know how the culture works there, but like Microsoft seemingly has either a very horrible enough culture to people be talking about it in like different (laughs) rooms and stuff like that, uh, at least in development culture, uh, or people or the company just really allows people to have like an open dialogue about it more often than others. And I think realistically, uh, there's much, there's many more people who work for Microsoft game studios than do for Sony. That's just a fact. Not saying that, not saying it's anything to do with quality. But when you compare 30 something studios at Microsoft all talking to each other and exchanging, you know, uh, compared to like what, what I think Sony is. What are they up to? Like, like it's between like 10 and 12, I feel it's like a third of the size. So there's just yeah. less, I think, you know, less fingers in the pie, so to speak. Yeah. Jet Set Radio remakes, too. I think every other like five other weebs in the world will be excited to see that there. I loved Jet Set Radio Future. But... Six weebs. Uh, <laughs> you ready to do like oh, let's do summer game fest just third party stuff well ma- mainly third party I, I I put Nintendo in here because I don't think they're having their own but I assume they will be part of summer game fest you ready to go yeah let's go Breath of the Wild 2 no I don't think any Nintendo is going to be there Metroid Prime 4 no Pokemon Horse and Dog or whatever they called the new one why, why are we doing Summer Game Fest or Nintendo? Summer Game Fest. Okay, I'm saying no to I don't, no I don't think Nintendo game. even has anything. They don't even have a Nintendo they, Direct. Play. They they're they're the same way as Sony. They only announce like three days before they actually do it. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Nintendo Directs are just as uncommon. Do you think any of those three will be shown in a Nintendo Direct? I think so. Yes, okay. but maybe not this month. But I think, that's I right, think Prime Nintendo 4, actually. Yeah, I think Prime 4 will have, like, some sort of, like... But, like, that depends. So Nintendo's in a very specific position, a very unique position, because there's no E3. They always relied on the E3 to handle that for them traditionally, and mm-hmm. then they moved into, like, their treehouse thing. Yeah. Uh, Post-Wii. Uh, post the Wii announcement and stuff like that. And then, like, now it's just, like, they're only focusing on directs, which is uh, super random. You never know when that's going to happen. Yep. Um, they're not, not trackable. So in this case, Nintendo should know already that they're like still in a very competitive market right now. Xbox and PlayStation uh, new generation is catching up to them in sales. Um, and they know that uh, all of their games are going to be playable on their platform. So they have to be able to come out with some pretty big guns this time around. So I think that N- N- Nintendo will have an announcement for this month, but I don't think it'll be as big or grandier as like what Xbox is going to do. We, we Not even, too. I don't even think Sony's going to do anything that big either, to be honest. Wii U too. Do you think they're gonna announce their next console anytime soon? New hardware. Dude, that's actually coming up. Like the Switch is a, almost a almost what five years old now. When did the so. Switch come out? I still think that thing's got quite a bit of life to it, though. They already they've already said though they already know what their next console's yeah. gonna be. Well, sure, they should know at least. But when do they plan to release it? Let me see here. When did the Switch come out? When did the Switch come out? They're working on a new Barbie movie, and uh, Ryan Gosling is playing Ken in it, Mass. In, in facts that you did not want to know. His I new movie with Chris it. Evans coming out this summer looks awesome, though. Buzz Lightyear? <laughs> the Gray Man. It's a action movie. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the Switch is literally five years old this year, okay. in November. So we've technically got, like... came out five one years ago, and it years. was already ten years behind when it came out, so... Actually, like, they, what what year did the GameCube come out? Two thousand one, because that's the hardware that they're working with. Well, they usually like work within like five to seven years within their lo- lo- console lifespan, right? Like the Wii U definitely didn't last that long. It lasted like what four years? I would say seven, probably. I could see Switch making it seven for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, see it going longer because it's a mad success. I don't know. They they literally need to be calling it like the Switch Two or something like that because Wii U Two. Just... That's what they need to call it. It needs to be a switch still. Like if they move off that plot, that format, it needs to like still remain the same. I don't care what they name the conventioning for it, but it needs switch to be. you. Yeah, maybe they like. Here's my prediction actually for like what the next console is. They're gonna still support the Switch too, but that's gonna be the new DS format, and then now they're gonna have a more dedicated at home console that will that. no longer play Switch titles. It will play like disc based games. I think that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna have a more that. powerful yeah. home console. You don't think is so? That- no, because A, they're fucking cheap. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> A, A, they're cheap. B, 
I think that they're still there's such a, an old mindset to them. It was like and it, I agree it was a good move merging their handheld team with their console team into one. I do. I do agree it was good. But in their mind, I think they still think of like, oh, we've got our handheld developers and we've got our console developers. And with Switch, they can be both on the same platform. So like, I don't. Who knows? Who knows? Right. I, they I can still, have both. They could solve their half their problems by just developing more mobile games, frankly. But they don't. Two things. Two things is one, like they 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 can sell a four hundred dollar console. I think that's still doable. Or yeah. they could just move to a three hundred fifty dollar margin, which is what they're currently doing with the Switch OLED. They could bring that down and just. I don't think they're even manufacturing older Switch models anymore. So I think it's only pure Switch OLED at the moment. Well, but probably going to buy all those old PS3s, and now they'll be up to PS3 technology with their next console. Japan with any kind of world like Dreamcast, economic, or uh, no, not economic, uh, with any kind of like re like uh, recycling program. Don't they like kill wells and stuff like that for sale? I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> um but no i i think what'll happen is they'll move the switch to be like the handheld and I, I think that there's space and the and there's and their market to continue to do like a more powerful console and put it disc based as well um but the at the same time it will, the switch at this it will point. alienate the switch. so it's just like you can have the gate like the best nintendo console um and then move over into something a little bit more convenient like the switch we'll see i mean I wouldn't predict this year, though. Maybe they announce it next year. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I think they'll like either. If not next year, probably the year after. Yeah, could be. Uh, they should they should make a Conquer sequel, but they never are going to. Uh, uh, okay, next game. Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Dude, ne- there's never going to be another good Tom Clancy game. Get off my back. No. There's st- uh, <laughs> Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. No. They, they, they did announce that. Splinter Cell died, okay? They announced it. It's a, re- a had, remake had, of the first died. game. It's official. Ubisoft doesn't like itself, and it doesn't like its game. Tom Clancy's fine, okay? The Division Heartland. That'll probably happen, actually, because they hate themselves. Well, it's official. All three of games. those games are announced. They're real, the they're real deal. The two of them aren't going to happen. The two of them aren't going to happen, dude. Okay. Uh, none of, and one remember of them that, will be there. Remember that one said. game that they finally showed Splinter Cell in? That was like some weird Fortnite-looking game, and then like they canceled <laughs> yeah. that? Well, that was like for that yeah. was for mobile, I think. It was a... They put Sam Fisher in like virtually every game that they have, but they're that's actually stupid. they're remaking the first game. That's official. Will it be there or not? I don't know. Originally an Xbox exclusive, by the way. Yeah, Rainbow uh, Six is going to be there with more content. Everyone's going to be complaining about. Yeah. And they'll try to make us forget that they made an al- a Rainbow Six game with aliens in it or whatever, <laughs> whatever alien zombies, whatever. Uh, somebody, EA. somebody had finally discovered Call of Duty Ghosts and said, "Wow, have you seen this game before?" <laughs> got aliens in it <laughs> uh will ea show more or less than five different star wars games <laughs> <laughs> actually no we didn't bring that up xbox is xbox might have a mandalorian oh game. that's right that's right oh no, we didn't bring that one up will there be five star wars games no i think there will be eight star wars games See, that's in the entire valid. showcase <laughs> valid because like, respawn just announced their star wars jedi survivor which just tell me how you feel already Puke. tell the world how you feel my, I should have shared this document with you. My, my, my company, my EA list just says, hey, guys, Star Wars. But hey, is spelled <laughs> H-A-Y. Uh, Mass Effect, the next Mass Effect. That's been announced for a good year or two now. Um, yeah, it's been in, since uh, 2021, actually, I think. And there's that massive spoiler out there now, thanks to their merch. So good I'm job, guys. Not, I'm not Good job, it. guys. Dead I'm Space to has it. to be there, yeah. right? Comes out in early 2023. They... Yeah, they delayed it again. So, well, not again, but they did delay it. It's yeah, like they January. Did delay it to Isn't it January? I think it's January 2020. Yeah, it's January. Yeah, it was supposed to come out this year, but they delayed it to uh, January. Okay. Uh, um, but uh, will Dead Space be there? Um, I would say yeah. I would say yeah. 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 Resident Evil 4 remake. If that's gonna be at the, anything this month or for June, it's gonna be at PlayStation. I agree. Uh. That's actually the last of it, because it, there's a million other things you could speculate about and things that are guaranteed to show up. Um, okay. But do you have anything else that comes to mind that I, I left off or bold predictions? Where are these sports games going to be announced, man? Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> there's not going to uh, be a FIFA this year, right? Because EA broke up with, with FIFA. There's, so. This is the last FIFA they're making. This oh, is so the last this is their official last one. FIFA okay. title. Yeah, FIFA 23 will still come out this year. 
Um, but after that, no more FIFA games. The, it's going to be whatever their new name is. The problem I have with all those games is that it's such a waste of time. And, and it's for the investors mostly and stuff. But showing those like annual release games during a conference like makes my blood boil. Because it's like, yeah, we know, guys. Like, yeah, new Madden, new FIFA, new MLB The Show. Like, we got it. You know, like, I'm not saying they're bad games. I'm just saying, like, it's so unexciting to see them like at a conference you know but it's so important man i, know. I mean like imagine that they're not there and then like the one guy who keeps buying every console just to play the same fifa game over and over is just like what is this what is fifa <laughs> like he's gonna be he's gonna be like what the hell i don't know why i said where, uh, something to where's fifa uh but like you know what i mean <laughs> like if, if fifa's not there it's gonna raise questions and concerns because usually people are like how is it the next FIFA? FIFA esta FIFA. mierda y basura y, uh, I don't know. I can't think of another insulting adjective. Uh, Regardless, I think FIFA, I think these sports games will be at Summer Games Fest. Probably, yeah. They'll put, yeah, probably have like a sports sizzle reel, like a, like a two two minute, like all their sports franchises. Yeah. If not there, I mean, and Jeff Keighley will flash his fake smile as he introduces it that he does so, so well. Hi hey everyone, I'm here. Bye. Yeah, yeah. he he does. Uh, he gets a lot of criticism, but that guy doesn't. Honestly, I think he does a great job being like a like a front man for the gaming industry. I really, I really 100%. do. To to the public, I think he's does a really good job. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, if if it's not at Summer Games Fest, like EA and Microsoft have always been tight. So yeah, yeah. Also, saw a rumor speaking of EA that Apple is actually really close to the acquisition for them. That's what I've heard too. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I heard a lot of people really upset about about that because they think that Apple might actually make some of their games like Apple platform exclusives. Not at all. Mm -mm. I, I mean, don't see the point in that. It would be pretty smart for them to like sell it exclusively on their cloud system for their Apple Arcade, whatever the fuck. Like through the storefront um, or something like that. Yeah, like if they had it on their storefront somehow, because like they have the Madden what mobile Apple... games, which actually do very well. I don't think they'll do that. Um, I mean, like, if Apple does do it, like, they're definitely going to be able to get into the video game business and start selling their games. It's been rumored that they're doing their own console for, like, five years now. I feel like that's always a rumor, though. Like, yeah, Apple's investing in the gaming. Like, Apple invests... They don't probably even invest has in Mac gaming, for God's sakes. Yeah, like, it's so dumb. And then, like, I think it's so weird that they always, like, have the audacity to, like, whenever they release, like, their M1 stuff, they're like, it's more powerful than a GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. And then it's just, like, MKBHD will come up. He's like, no, that was an absolute lie. None of that and is true. And it runs <laughs> 13 games. Yeah, like, it's ridiculous. Apple's never going to be able to do well in the in the PC gaming market, obviously. Apple um, Arcade, I think, or... is a good endeavor for them. I think they yeah, should be investing I... in that. I think they are. I think they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, like, I first, I thought whenever they came out with their new upgraded Apple TV, I thought that was actually a really solid strategy. Like, it mm -hmm. made so much sense to have such an affordable, kind of, like, lightweight console that had exclusive games on it at the time. Um, but those exclusive games were very, very small, like super small. They were supposed to be on Game Pass small. Mm -hmm. um, and that's no criticism to Game Pass, but that's just that's just the catalog that we have these days where it's just like small ass games and up on the yeah. catalog for yeah. Game Pass. So hopefully they double down on it. I think Apple is definitely in the business to start investing in their own cloud strategy. Yeah. Or at least sure. expanding it. Makes sense to me. Um, so we've got two other quick topics and we'll get hooded hooded Jester on here to talk about D&D &D and Stranger Things with us. Uh, Sony, going back to Sony, uh, they announced a Horizon and Gran Turismo yeah. series this past week. This joins God of War being made into a series and The Last of on Us. On Amazon. Yeah, God of War on Amazon and then... Uh, Last of Us on uh, HBO. HBO. And then uh, Horizon and Turismo were Netflix, right? Yeah, uh, Horizon definitely is. I don't remember Gran Turismo for sure. I think Turismo is also Netflix, which I mean, like I was listening. I was just listening to, like the JRE and then like uh, I think it was Joe. No, no, it was uh, it was Bert Bert Kreischer. Bert Kreischer. I, keep, I never know how to Bert say his Reynolds. name, but he was like talking about he was talking about like dude formula like Netflix shows actually stupid good. So I'm always interested to see that kind of stuff. I like, just. I like that the horizon one if it's animated i could see it being really good i think if they do live action for horizon it'll be a disaster 
Um, it's got to be live action, though. That's how. That's the point of it. The, the CG, the CG, all those. It's gonna be a freaking fortune. Either the CG is gonna be complete trash, or the, the budget is gonna have to be extremely high. The CG, it's all those enemies, the metallic mm -hmm. robot dinosaurs, and then I. What are they, who are they gonna get to direct it? Michael Bay? Like, if, <laughs> that would be great. But, I mean, that. I mean, he's the. That game's got more lens flares than any other game since like Battlefield. So it's yeah. just like, yeah, I think you'd do a really good do a job doing that. He game. would. Um, um, but uh, I mean, like, it, this is interesting because it kind of like it. It doesn't add up to like what I was saying like a couple of podcasts ago. What Sony's strategy would be with like their IP because mm -hmm. now they've got Sony Productions and now Sony Development Studios and stuff like that that can collaborate and create really cool products. But they're not leaning into that at all. Like the only team, the only IP that they're really doing that with is Spider Man because Spider Man well, is obviously the most sellable product they, they did have. Say they're working on shows or movies for ten of their IPs. Which is good, but is it a Sony production project? Because if not, fucking, then it kind of like throws away on this show. Sorry, because <laughs> uh, it, it throws away like the the point of like their 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 movie business. I mean, well, they've fortunately that, put out Morbius for us. That's what I was gonna it. say. Is I really hope that Sony doesn't touch this stuff because we got Morbius, we got Venom one and two. Like, please <laughs> let somebody else make it. Like, I was so happy when when HBO signed on to do The Last of Us and not like some sony internal team because i was like thank god yeah. that they're not gonna destroy this and make it like i don't know true i will see what happens and i really hope that you know you said if horizon was an animated like they can dump junk they can jump into crunchy roll sell that product on there honestly like i think horizon is a very like very colorful game mm -hmm. that would do really well in like the likes of the same studio that's been doing the um uh, the Miles Morales Spider-Man uh, movie, the yeah, animated yeah. one, that was really good. I think that has a, has a space in that area. Um, Death Stranding is one of those games that definitely needs to be a live action, though. I feel like that's what Kojima always strives for is the most he wants hyper to make realistic. Movies eventually, he really yeah. does. Um, uh, but other than that, I mean, like it's it's interesting to see what they're going with. A their lot of Netflix right now. animated series are are really really good i mean when you look at whether it's something like arcane or something like castlevania there's a wide disparity between those two in approach but they've done a lot of good animated series i could see horizon animated being really good gran turismo is a true head scratcher for me because there's to my knowledge i mean it, i guess it's a blank slate in a way that you could do pretty much whatever you want with it within the racing mm -hmm. uh you know realm but the director that they're eyeing is Neil Blomkamp, who's done uh, District Nine, District Nine, and uh, Chappie, Ch like like super sci-fi uh, and like horror. Even some of his stuff he, leans into he horror. He even did. He's done the original Halo live action stuff too yeah, during the yeah. Halo Three stuff. I mean, he knows games. Obviously, he's developed. Well, he's working on a game. Um, he's not directing it or anything, but he's working on a game at least. So, but I'm just like. So pairing racing with a guy who's done like sci-fi and horror is such an odd, odd pairing. But I mean, maybe I don't know. Gran Turismo also is like one of those games that's probably not super fitting for a story. I mean, like oh, it's just it's literally AF. it's 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 a motorsport game. It's not like a street racing game or anything like that. They treat every single race See, in that game, to my knowledge, that's what like it's a gonna be, dude. It's gonna be Fast and the Furious knockoff. I guarantee it, dude. <laughs> They're just gonna sign Vin Diesel straight up. He's gonna be talking about family and Gran Turismo, like uh, barbecue family. <laughs> getting way off track here. Tell us when you're back hooded. Um, did you see that video, that like selfie video that Vin Diesel made with the director of Fast and Furious the day before he quit the new movie? No. Did you hear the director of the new, the final Fast and Furious movie quit? No. What happened? He quit. <laughs> he, I don't know that he gave a reason. It might have been creative differences. But you've heard that Vin Diesel's notoriously hard to work with, right? Yeah, apparently, like even The Rock doesn't like working with him. Oh, he hates him. They hate each other. Um, but Vin Diesel, they all say he's super lazy. He shows up. He doesn't know his lines. He thinks he's like, especially within the Final Fantasy franchise, he thinks he like is the Final Fantasy franchise. Um, but anyway, the directors directed a lot of the Final Fantasy movies, I think. And uh, did I say Final Fantasy? Fast and the Furious. Yeah, you said Final Fantasy. I was like, Fast I, the I kind of get what he's saying. I was like, so, does he think he's like Cloud or Sephiroth or something? He, he quit supposedly because of Vin Diesel. 
And uh, the day before, like, Vin Diesel's, like, on set, like, taking videos with him. He's like, hey, Justin, tell him how great this movie's gonna be. And the director's just like, great. It's gonna be really great. And Vin Diesel's, like, trying to, like, hype it up. And he's like, yeah, it's gonna be the best one yet. Would you say it's gonna be the best one yet? And the director's just like, yes. And, like, the next day he quit. It's, it's so fun. You gotta see it. It's, like, 30 seconds long, but it's just... Why would he post that if it's, like, clearly not gonna... If it... Chronicle of Riddick was good. good. Yeah, Chronicle of Riddick was good. Triple X, too, right? I mean, that was... Yeah, never mind. Triple X was a pretty, pretty dope movie, too, actually. I'm not gonna lie, man. That was, like, some old, like, 2000s edge stuff coming out. Like, we had Blade, we had Underworld, we had The Matrix. I mean, just because Vin Diesel is, you know... Just because Final Fantasy... A... Why do I keep saying Final Fantasy? Fast and the Furious is over, is gonna be over. It doesn't mean that Vin can't do other stuff. I don't know. Isn't he like all fat now and stuff like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, that dude's gotta be in his forget. 50s, I would think. I remember the last time I watched like the most recent Riddick movie, and I was living with my friend's parents, and his mom is a pastor, so she doesn't really like watch a lot of that stuff, but her husband is like ex-military. He's like, I want to watch Riddick. He's like, I like the Riddick movies, so sex scene comes on and like she i am like embarrassed that i'm there with her but she's yeah. like covering her face with like the blankets because the sex scene's coming on she's like oh my god, oh, like, oh my god what the what, like that breaking like, bad scene where jesse's at dinner with walt and uh his wife and he's drinking out of the water for like 30 seconds and like looking around through like his glass i haven't seen breaking bad that oh much, it's so. great it's like a super uncomfortable dinner that he gets like roped into like in the moment and they're like arguing and he, like, takes his water, and he's just, like, drinking it, like, very slowly, and it's, like, keeping it up with his <laughs> lips and looking around. Oh, God. All right, one more thing, then we're going to get into, we're going to get just around here. Diablo Immortal has been banned in several European countries because the monetization is so severe that it's considered gambling. Loot boxes, essentially. They, yeah. they, have, they have problems with loot boxes in Europe quite a bit. They do. Yeah. They do. Doesn't Hawaii have a ban on it too? I remember like the oh. the governor of Hawaii was like saying they want to get rid of it. I do remember that. I think I do remember that. I don't think they got anything through though. Yeah, it's just not the thing with video game laws is especially in the U.S. Like it's just usually never going to be a priority, right? There's like yeah. six thousand other issues that you know should be taking priority over. Video game the reason problems. Why, well, the reason why nothing happens with video game laws is because the, most of these people are lobbyists and they realize that they're going to lose all of their credibility and all of their funding from everybody that they get support from. So if they cut out gambling, things with weapons and stuff like that, that's not going to be... It's not going to help them get into the position of power that they want to, which I don't understand why people keep thinking they need to keep climbing the power ladder, but whatever. We're not... This isn't what we're talking <laughs> so We said no with politics this, <laughs> this one, this yeah. podcast. Um. All right. So, uh, Diablo Immortal comes out this week, by the way, guys, and I'm actually excited for I it. I, I, it I preloaded on PC. Uh, I'm pretty stoked. It's been a minute since I played Diablo. Uh, other, yeah. Other stuff coming out this week: uh, Splitgate Beta Season Two and Card Shark from Devolver. Um, What's Card Shark? It's a game about like cheating in cards. I think <laughs> that's literally like what it is. What a what a generalization. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Like that's actually what it is. Like cheating okay. people in, in card games. That's like a it's like a story game. Uh, it's a devolver game, so you know it's gotta have some weird like edge to it. You know what I mean? Uh all right, Hooded. You ready to go, dude? Have you jump in? We're gonna talk about some upcoming Nemesis content and uh Stranger Things. I hope Stranger he's things. watched it or else. Kicking him right he off the show. I'm just hanging up. I'm closing this Discord. Oh, he's coming in. I might have to readjust the uh, windows here in a second. Probably will. Oh, You're yeah. there? We see you. Oh, yeah. You definitely need to move some stuff yeah. around there. Yeah. This is what I deal with when I actually run the D&D show constantly. <laughs> yeah. It's fun, isn't it? No. No, it's not. <laughs> I need to turn you up, but yeah, any too. way that you can possibly turn up your uh, your audio. You bring a Captain America shirt? I am. Wait. I, I like to keep my microphone separate, so I, I, I do have this one, but I, I tend to use the Yeti that's on my desk. 
no, totally understand. Uh, all right, well, here we go. <laughs> Mayor's trying his best right now on stream. I'll get it. You guys, so, uh, while I'm adjusting our windows and stuff, Jester, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with Nemesis and D&D? &D? So, this is actually a project that I started um, separately. Uh, one of uh, a friend of ours uh, came to me and he was like, "Hey, would you, would you like to be interested in running a D and D campaign? Because I've been playing D and D since I was a kid. Uh, put it into perspective, I started when I was maybe eight years old. My, what is D and D again? Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Uh, it's a tabletop uh RPG. So don't look at it like a normal video game type thing. It's actually sometimes you have actual miniature figures, uh, actual map boards that you would set out on a big table and put together. What I've been using is Roll20, uh, as well as D&D uh, &D Beyond, which is just a, a side thing to utilize. Uh, you can actually buy the books off of there, which they recently were picked up by Wizards of the Coast with an actual uh, sponsorship in there, which is actually pretty cool. That's Thank pretty cool. God. Thank God we needed that. <laughs> Because you would buy the physical books, and then if you wanted to use D&D &D Beyond, you had to buy them digitally separately. Like, you'd, you'd spend the physical money, and then you'd spend more money just to buy the books. So I think what they're working on now is they're going to be putting codes and stuff like that into the mm -hmm. actual books. So if you buy it physically, you can just redeem it and use it online, too, if you're running online campaigns. Um and it's uh, so it started with uh, a small group of people, uh, actually some nemesis names that you might know, like Vengeance Gaming and It's Hobbs are actually two of my players. Um, and they were a part of the original campaign. We did Curse of Strahd, which uh, starts with you're, you're going into a, a land that's cursed entirely, dark clouds all the time. And it's an, it's an immortal vampire whose name is uh, Count Strahd. And he rules over the entire land. He's, he's a despot. And the object of the goal was to displace him, at, well, kill him, remove him in some way, shape, or form. Uh, what we moved on to, uh, which we're currently in the second season, is it's a bit of a homebrewed Star Wars campaign. Okay. Oh, my uh, God. You, could... <laughs> you don't know me well enough to know my feelings on Star Wars, but, but continue. But we also uh, I, we picked up the, uh, the Super Bedic, another Nemesis uh, member. He, he, he joined into the campaign. Um, and it, it, it's fun. It, it's it's lighthearted. There's jokes, uh, all, all, all that goes on behind the scenes. And I'm just I'm excited uh, to be brought this opportunity by by Nemesis in general to actually start this uh, show up uh, in June. Uh, it's going to be on su it's going to be Sundays at 6 p.m. Uh, on this channel, right? Uh, on on the Nemesis uh, GG main channel. That is correct. So I have a question actually because I'm I've never ran D and D as much as I would like to. Uh, I just don't have the friend group who's interested to do that. Despite them being nerds, they just haven't had given me the opportunity to say, hey, let's have let's try D and D for the night. Um, and it's also a pretty big thing to do at the same time. It's usually best with like what more than like at least three people, right? Um, <laughs> It's not, you can actually run if you have a DM and like two other people that want to play, you can do that. And and that's the fun part. It's just you as the DM, you have to adjust the, 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 in the encounters and the fights to match the size of the party that you're playing with. D&D &D is a, any, any type of size party. It's best with two, but you always can go, uh, I'm currently, I have seven. I have seven players that are currently playing with me and uh, after this season, two of my players are actually going to be dropping out for a little bit, so there will be a, kind of an open casting call to see how if anybody would like to get involved in it. And that that's and this goes out to anybody that's a nemesis that would like to dip their hand into the Dungeons and Dragons lifestyle. Okay. Uh, hooded. Well, check. Go ahead, Jada. I will say you heard me. I have not had my D and D experience. You're San Antonio based, right? Uh, no, I'm actually in Katy. Katie, oh man, why are you there, brother? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, without, I mean, like, without getting too much into it, I had to move back in with my parents. Okay, all right. No, I feel that. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, th that's, what, that's what I was going to say. It's just like, I know that you could do it with at least a minimum of three people. Three people is like best. But the larger the party size, the more uh, exciting you could be, the more like ambiguity happens there because you never know what's going to happen, even whenever you have like a set campaign and stuff like that, which I want to ask about in a second. But 
best with like more than three people. Um, and that's something that, you know, we'll weed into here in a bit, but like just watching the way that it's even scripted out on like Stranger Things, you know, I'd imagine that that's the kind of fun that we would like to have. If I ever had my first D&D experience, I want it to be as fun as like these kids are having it as well. Um, one question I do have is like, whenever it comes to campaign creation, uh, do you do it like yourself? I, I don't understand what campaign creation looks like. Is it like a set universe that you already take from, or is it something you can build all on your own, or is it a mix of both? So there is, there are actual campaign books that you can buy in a store that come with a pre-built story to the entire thing. But there's a term that we like to use called homebrew. Mm-hmm. where you take it, you you take the ideas that you would like to work on, like what I'm doing with Star Wars right now. I have it set uh, about 3,900 to 3,600 BBY. So it's it's during the time of like the old Republic. There's yeah. still a ton of Sith out there. There's a gigantic war going on between the Jedi and the Sith. Um, and you just take bits and pieces from, if you want to do a themed thing, like, Star Wars, Kingdom Hearts, Gears of War. Like, you can turn anything into a D&D campaign. Yeah. And that's what's fun about it, because it's all all imaginative. Now, me, I I take the time, and I work on the story about three to four hours, and that's just getting and working on ideas. And that doesn't even include building the maps that I need in order for my players to, like, get a real sense of what's going on. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And whenever it comes to the the roles and everything like that, the character creation, how does coming into this new campaign work for anybody, whether you're old or you're new to the to the game? Do you like come prepared with like, hey, here is like my stat list, this is how I built my character, this is how I'm introducing to them? How are those rules and those limitations put in place before you actually start the campaign? So me as a DM, I like to help and sit down. I sit down with my players. For the Star Wars campaign, I sat down with every single one of my players and worked on their characters with them block by block. And I did the same thing when we started the other campaign because I had I do I do work with a lot of new players and I'm always always loving to work with new players because I get to introduce them into something that they've never really had their eyes on before and I get to really show them how fun it can actually be when you put yourself into that mindset. Okay. All right. So as far as, you know, the storytelling elements of D&D, like how do you uh, how do you set things the way you want them to? Is it like a bias of yours or you're just like, you know what, this is what I would love to have done if I was the the movie director or the story, the novel writer for this D&D campaign. Do you like go off a of bias or do you go off something that's more likely to happen? Uh I actually allow the players to kind of dictate. I give them the basic, I, I describe the basic generalized setting, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And I go, okay, so for instance, uh, Mayor and... Uh, Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> you, guys, uh, you guys walk into a tavern. There's, it's packed. You, you see orcs, you see elves, you see dwarves there's a a nice lady behind the bar uh pouring drinks out of a meal and you guys walk in and it's just bustling there's music there's it you you smell good oven roasted potatoes and lamb what do you do so as far as coming up with the scenario about what would i do i would say what i'd want and i roll a die that dictates the effectiveness of that of that action you don't have to roll a die. Okay. So uh, you, uh, the, the only times you actually have to roll dice is if you're doing a, uh, a skill check, if you're making an attack, or uh, – so like the only, time I, the only time I personally have players roll dice is if they're making skill checks to, to do things. Like if they want to do a performance, say you're a bard and you, ha- you pull out your loot and you go, I want to play the most – rocking song ever to try to make some money for some mm-hmm. food i would have you roll your d20 uh i thought i grabbed my dice out of my bag i've definitely so seen could... a d20 before though yeah i'm familiar uh, with it so then you roll it and then you'll look at your stat sheet and on your stat sheet there will be uh, a performance check modifier and you and you as a bard you're gonna have that filled in so you're gonna be proficient in it so what that means is you're gonna do your normal uh your normal roll which uh, 
as a bard, your charisma stat's going to want to be your highest. So if you have an 18 in charisma, it's normally a plus four modifier. But with that additional proficiency bonus, it's an additional two. So whatever you roll, you're adding six. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So uh, back to like the original question about what would I do? I just come up with additional thoughts and scenarios that would lead me into obvious multiple pathways, right? So I would say, oh, I would have just said, I don't want your food and slapped you, right? I can go with that. See, I could see that coming from Mayor. Mayor looks like he'd be the fighter that goes to pick the biggest I, fight with an orc. I, my honest answer was going to be that I was going to raise my, my shotgun and my chainsaw hand and say, this is my boomstick. And then... <laughs> I, uh, so, oh. in full honesty, in this case, Mayor would obviously be the one everyone can't stand at the D&D party <laughs> because he just can't take it seriously. Well, well actually, e- even if you that can't is take serious. it seriously... Maybe I'll well, die. Even if, e- e- even if there are people that don't take it seriously, sometimes they actually have the funniest interactions. And okay. even though they're not, even though they're not taking it seriously, and they do fun and they do things that, and they're just trying to make it say that they're not taking it seriously, eventually it turns into holy shit, I fucking love this. <laughs> okay, I get that. There's like this, um, one of my funniest, like, th- there's a guy I follow on TikTok, uh, I forgot what his name was, but he always does like this funny get up where uh, he's like in a, in a Praise the Sun outfit, he's got chain mail on, and uh, he has like this Merlin the Wizard uh, character yes. that he plays. Yes. You know who I'm talking and, about? And, and, and he's always looking for the MILFs. He's always looking for MILFs, yeah. And he's like, Actually, no, I'm not looking for MILFs. I am now, uh, that's derogatory, so I will respect them now. And he's like, okay, cool, what do you do? He's like, I push a person aside, cast Fireball, and see if there's any Bowilla behind him. Then he goes, Bowilla, beautiful woman that I would like to date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, and like, it, and, and I, got, I gotta say, like, the interactions that I have with the group, they're, they do very well, and it, it, it helps when you get into it with the DM, because the DM isn't there to tell you every little detail it's up to the players to also create scenarios i can push them on the rails as as long as i want to but that's where it gets kind of boring if if you yeah. just continue to do the same thing but if you let them open up yeah. their mind and and like do things that they want to do you can create new branching pathways that can still lead back to the main story plot lines if you want to okay so- let me let me ask a question real quick if you don't if you don't mind let me interject. So as somebody I don't oh, I'm like Jedi. I probably even have less knowledge of of D and D. So if I'm coming to watch the show, do we have a name for the show yet? By the way, uh, current working title is Jester's Court. Okay. So um, I, sorry, are you gonna say something? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. So if if I come to watch Jester's Court for the you no, know, this this is my first. Anytime I'm going to be watching D and D, period. But we're watching it on Twitch, right? So we're watching it on this channel. What's that going to be, going to be like? Like, what should I expect? Like coming in, like, what's the format going to be like on Twitch? Like, what's that viewing experience like? So I can tell you that uh, I have a screen that shows the actual maps that I have laid out. Underneath of that, I have cameras for all of my my players have their cameras on so you can see their reactions, you can see their faces. Uh, I'm going to fix it up a little bit more so because we do a lot of uh, dice rolls on D20 and uh, on Roll20. Which is a D, uh, which is a website specifically for that, where you can build, uh, build your games, put your maps on there, and they have dice rolling, uh, things, and we're, you're going to be able to see people dice uh, rolling their dice on on that on that board, which is pretty cool, and you you can see the reactions if they get it like a natural one or if they get a natural twenty, you can actually see them like get ecstatic or go, oh shit, I fucked up. <laughs> And it's debuting in June, you said, right? Do we have an exact date yet, or no? It's 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 still a working thing. Uh, Certain I night of the week? Say, are we going to expect? Uh, or? Sundays, Sundays okay, at Sundays. six. Okay. Um, we were on a bit of we we're on a bit of a break for uh, uh, the last two weeks, and I'm working behind the scenes right now doing? with some of the higher ups. Uh, and we're going to try to get it started up here soon. Okay. So it'll be Sundays starting sometime at, in June at 6 p.m. Uh, Central? Yeah, that is correct. Central time. Okay. 
and it's normally about three to four hours of, of game time. Wow. Well, That's quite uh, the commitment. So, well, and here's the thing. You, you can't go into a D&D session thinking that it's going to be an hour or two because it, it, it never ends up being an hour or two. Hmm. You can go in thinking, oh, I have it set for an hour. Nothing will get done. It, 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 an hour could be one encounter. Yeah, I've heard most D and D campaigns can last well over like three to four days, depending on like how the players also interact with stuff, and also the size of the player base too, right? So I imagine seven players in one campaign probably stretch across maybe at least maybe what three to four days, right? Uh, if not longer. Season one spanned about a month. Damn. Okay. Never mind. And season two, knowledge. we're we're season two, we're already at about a month of playtime with current with the current season that we're we're, we're doing. Um, so no, it it spans longer than about three to four days because one, you have to get the schedule set up, and everybody has to be able to be able to meet up at that time. If somebody can't, well, then you continue. But and thankfully, I have good note takers that actually have set up a Google Doc, so we have notes at all times. So if anybody misses a session, they can go back in read what happened, get caught up, and understand. And on top of that, we do recaps uh, before uh, we get into every session. There's, okay. always a, there's always a recap that goes on. Previously um, on Jester's Court. <laughs> eh, more or less, but I actually use a voice mod to kind of make it sound more grandiose than I <laughs> already sound. That's what I was about to ask next. I was like, so if you're DM, like, do you like get into like the, the voice roles and the acting for it too? Uh, yes, actually, there is. I have a DM. I have a couple of DM characters that I kind of make, but they kind of help somewhat keep them on track. Most of the time, they just don't give. Uh, I, I don't really care. Like, I have a character who is, uh, was from season one who came into this season because uh, season one and season two are interconnected. It, uh, the original campaign brought into it's now years in the future. But at the same time, it's still in the past for us. It's it's how Star Wars works, you know, mm -hmm. that, that whole thing. Um, but he was originally a small rodent looking uh, creature that traveled with the original party. And he has lived sent from then to the current time period that we're at. And he turns out he's actually a Jedi master. His name is uh, Golfuzzy. Uh, and uh, he kind of goes ahead and sounds a little bit like this. Kind of sounds like he's from the Bronx. You know, it's, it's it's really just all scented back in the back of the throat. And you it really helps on the... It, 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 sounds sound like, like... Uh, it sounds like, what's his name from episode one? Uh, the Anakin's owner. No, see, that's a Tordarian. The Tordarian, <laughs> you, you gotta really get a little bit more. For Tordarians, it's a completely different thing. I actually, there's a player who does Tordarians really well. Tordarians are kind of my thing. Tordarians got like a weird Russian... New York accent going on, or not Russian? Is Russian like the right language, or like? Uh, no, actually, actually, I would say it's more Tordarians sound a little bit more Russian. Yeah, so you're you're a little bit more correct on that, and it's it's hard for me to kind of go into a, a Russian accent. But uh, a, a new and I actually let viewers kind of help uh, make NPCs if they want to. And uh, somebody recently uh, brought an NPC to my uh, attention, whose name is Poi Poi. And uh, Poi Poi is a Gungan. So, uh, Misa think uh, Poi Poi sounds a little bit uh, kind of <laughs> like Jaja. Ja. Uh, but, you know, he's not as dumb. He understands things a little bit better, but uh, he's a Poi Poi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, not, that's funny. I, I'm mentioning another TikTok that I saw. Some, some boyfriend was letting his girlfriend name every character he saw in Star Wars, and Jar Jar came up, and she goes, Oh, I know him. That's R2D2. <laughs> Oh man, but that's awesome though. I mean, like, it's great to hear that like D and D like has such a wide variety of of character it can bring um, to. I think what I think that people at a surface level would look like as very nerdy. Let's be real; it is it's pretty damn nerdy. But that's the fun of it. Like, who cares if it's nerdy or not? And at this point, like D and D, I think has just exploded. Uh, and that could be too. Do do a lot of things. It could be because of Stranger Things has grown in popularity. I feel like. A lot of the people I knew in the past or have at least some sort of like, again, surface level knowledge of who they are as a person would never expect them to be playing D&D. &D. And now they're like, oh, yeah, I had a D&D &D session like last weekend. And now it's all over their Instagram stories or their Twitter and stuff like that. Um, the rise in D&D &D has gotten a lot bigger. I, I really appreciate it. And I think that's because nerd culture and pop culture now finally becoming one.
So one of one of my favorite things is uh I, I served in the United States Army for six years. Um, Happy Memorial Day. We it, it, Memorial Day is about those who have fallen. No, no, it no. Has no I nothing to do with me being alive right you now. You have not fallen. I'm very familiar with the <laughs> memory of the day. But you know, at the same time, you know, Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Yeah, at which I want to say, because uh, I was listening to when you guys started off everything, I want to say thank you for the announcement that you guys made. It, it's it's a very solemn day where we were, sit back and remember those who did fall. But uh, going back to what I was saying, I, 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 I ran some D&D games here and there for people in my unit when we would get bored. We actually, uh, at one point, we fashioned soap uh, into dice. Oh, wow. So yeah. it, it, it it's more rampant than you think, especially in the military. Like it, we're all nerds over there. Like we do some crazy things. Um, okay, that's awesome. I I have a quick quick question for you. So if I let's say I'm listening to this and I want to get ready for Jester's Court in June, it's gonna be on this channel. I'm somebody who's hearing about it for the first time. What what should I do right now? Like, is there somewhere that I can go to like? see kind of what you guys are doing or you're preparing or are there certain pl things that you say like oh yeah go read this or go watch this video and that'll kind of help prime you you know wh what should somebody like that do well i i know for a fact i should still maybe maybe it might still have a vod or two saved on my on my personal twitch channel which is where i was streaming it um and what's that channel oh uh, that would be hooded jester vr okay which it's not there all videos no uh it's been over the time frame um we were originally supposed to start saving them and uh we were gonna actually have somebody posting them onto youtube but that kind of went out the window because some other things had occurred uh which the original player who got me back into dming for this entire thing had some work issues so he had to dip out and then we replaced with some other people all I got to say is you, you don't really need to, if you want, if this is the first time when we started up and you, this is the first time ever watching it, you don't have to worry about a thing. There will be a recap at the beginning. Um, and you'll get to know the character. You'll get to know the characters because when we started up on, on the new channel, I'm definitely going to have all the players reintroduce themselves just so everybody gets a feel for who they are. And uh, definitely uh, between seasons, uh, as Maz is saying as well, something that we're working on is between the seasons, we're going to involve the care, uh, viewership in character creation. So after this current season's done and before we start the next one, there will actually be uh, about two weeks of prep time where we'll get the car we'll get the cast onto uh, a call. We'll, we'll set up a stream and viewers will be able to actually interact and help build the characters. There will be channel point redemptions and things like that as well. Uh, viewer polls inter and just interacting with the cat, with the viewers to help build the characters, to get them more involved in it uh, in the long run. Sounds good. Right. Sounds I'm, like a solid plan. Yeah. Yeah. It, so people will be able to come watch D and D on this channel on Sundays, watch the podcast on Mondays. We're going to have some good, good stuff going. <laughs> Damn, Nemesis sure does got a great social content pro timeline put up together. Gee, oh boy. You should <laughs> definitely go follow them on Twitter. Nemesis GG. So now we got to ask a really important question. Have you watched the most recent season of Stranger Things? You want me to be completely honest with you? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> I have not watched a single season of Stranger Things. Oh my gosh! Oh man, it's, you're definitely missing it, out, man. It, 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 it's not for lack of wanting to watch it. It's I, I don't have Netflix. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, Everyone's got that account, one man. friend. Everyone's got listen, that one friend who's got a Netflix account. Listen, I I could probably go around to a couple of friends, maybe see what's going on, but I just I, bet, I, I haven't I, gotten into. I want to do a social experiment. We should make this the next Nemesis piece of content. Maybe we could do this as a YouTube video or something. Or we walk around to random people on the street. Pick any place. We'll do some. We'll, to to no. make sure it's diverse. San Antonio no. and New York. And ask if they will if they will let you uh, borrow their so their Netflix password to watch. Pick a different show in every single video. Be like, can I borrow your Netflix, Netflix password? I really want to watch Stranger Things. Or... Uh, uh 
love Whatever. death and robots. See, yeah, there you go. See, see, see how many people you have to ask till you get one that says yes. This is like a Impractical Jokers skit or something. <laughs> like this is a multi-million dollar. That's why idea. I hate it. No, we're not doing but, that. This is a horrible idea. But, to but go you back don't to have to do it, Jay. Jay. Going back to the Stranger Things, I have heard nothing but good things about it. I have caught clips here and there, and I have laughed at some of the the scenes. Um, Finn Wolfhard, phenomenal actor. I, I think the entire cast has carried that show very well, and I, it's definitely on a list of shows to watch. Yeah, yeah. Finn Wolfhard is definitely like I think the next like scary, uh, like horror like actor wave you know, we've we've had that with like bill scarsgard scarsgard i forgot how to say his last name he was um, in it right yeah, he was pennywise in it he's been in a lot of different no no, no. Of uh, finn finn, finn, finn wolfhard right? finn wolfhard was in, was in it, was in yeah. it. Yeah. yes yeah he, he yeah, played he uh, as well richie yeah he plays richie he did a damn good job of it. he was hilarious in the movie um oh, i i think him and bill Hader like carried yeah carried 100%. that entire film 100 percent. no fantastic film i never even saw part two but i heard part two was, was a pretty good miss you don't need we don't need to watch it um but uh as far as as far as like the cast for seats for stranger things i mean like everyone does such a phenomenal damn job and this season has been so good uh we've gotten to see like a much stronger diverse cast especially whenever it comes to adding these uh russian elements into it um That's just what? for context there's a, it takes place during the 80s, so Cold War, everything like that, espionage, Satanic spying, panic all that kind of stuff. with D and D was a big part of this season. You know they did, yeah. D and D was, oh, I mean D and D is always a big part of Shane. Yeah, but things, the so. the the Satanic panic part thing that happened like during the yeah, 80s, there, yeah. it ties directly into the story of the season. It ties directly into D and D, which ties directly into the story, into the plot. Yeah. Something that I think you would like a lot, appreciate too, for the sake of lore, is that the the each season they always start off with some sort of a form of D&D campaign that's going on. And oh, they always that. do it in a way that leads to the name of the of the monster. So uh, the very first one was the Demogorgon. The second one was the Mind Flayer. Mind Flayer came back for season three for different reasons. We'll talk, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, and then the this, this third oh, one- Hold um, up, wait a minute, time out. Mind Flayer is, an, is a D&D creature to begin with. So yeah, that, that's that, what they that, said. That's that's yeah. already got my that's already piqued my interest and uh talking about who, who's who got a netflix account hey dark lady said hey i got one I See, got that's one. what i'm saying go lady yeah uh but yeah i mean like the 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 new season also has another character who was it this time vecna. uh vecna yeah is vecna also in there yeah pretty sure Ooh. I, i'm asking the yeah, D &D yeah, yeah, yeah yes yes and no um there's variations of, of Vecna. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure this is also a variation of Vecna in the show, naturally. Um, this, uh, okay, so the way that they portray Vecna in Stranger Things Season 4 is that he's a wizard spellcaster. Does that, does that has add up? ties to spiders. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's straight, that's straight out of the monster manual. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I think the Duffer, the Duffel, Duffer, Duff, uh, the Duffel Bag Brothers, I don't know what the name was. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're just genuine nerds also. Jack Slater, they, they've I done... in there too. <laughs> um, they've, they've come to like plenty of interviews saying like, we just take everything that we had in our childhood and we just do our best to recreate it in the show. Um, and uh, everything seems super authentic about it. Everything from the vibe of the 80s. I'm a 90s kid, so I can't really say for certain if it's like the truest 80s experience ever, but I'm everything feels like an authentic 80s experience to me from what it's i've seen in film good. pretty good yeah uh, uh, this highly, season's... highly recommend getting that that netflix account from dark lady because yeah. you need to watch it bro this oh 100 uh, that's going to be the first thing that i that it's going to be on my list the whole show is definitely inspired by dungeons and dragons like like jade i said they literally play dungeons and dragons every single season and that this one of this season's other big influences is uh nightmare on elm street and uh they actually yep. got the guy who yep. played freddy krueger cast in the show which is which is pretty, pretty awesome yeah robert, and, robert england is an, another phenomenal actor and oh. at first i thought it was both scars skasgard as well i thought that was him i was like no 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 that's not him i looked it up i was like no it's not him but like phenomenal job as a character in the show 
uh, everything about it, this season has been so different compared to the last season. One was such a breath of fresh air, I think for cinema. And I say cinema, I mean like, you know, the TV screen, right? Mm -hmm. Cause we've gotten a, a, a blast to the past with like this eighties kind of like horror experience that we have, but with led the, the way on that. Yeah. With with what with what with, with a much more refined cast and as well as story that we're given as well because nobody knows what the hell is going on and it brings back that I think what people experienced for the first time was like the first um, most like slasher movies like who is Freddy Krueger who is uh, Jason Voorhees who is uh, Michael Myers like it brought that that interest of like there's clearly something not of this world happening within the world so there's so much curiosity in there and that's what made season two season one so great season two i know some people weren't big fans of actually no i think a lot of people like season two season two was definitely the sequel to what we see in most sequels of anything it was just like much there was bigger. really only one element of season two that people didn't like it was like Eleven's story when she stepped out with her like whatever those people were people group. didn't like that yeah, yeah. When they, everything when else was fine everything else was fine yeah i i'm agreeing with that that part i didn't really much care for it felt and you know what I mean by forced, but like this felt like a forced like part of the commentary and the story that they, like they wanted to share. Just it to felt get like it out they didn't the know what to do with her yeah. character at that point. But yeah, season three, my favorite. I don't think season four is going to top it, despite how good it is. I love season three so much because season three felt like it finally pieced together what they wanted to do in season two with season one and like just created such a phenomenal like storyline uh re-watching it because i have roommates i have a roommate who's not watched any stranger things so I'm sitting down there watching it with them again and i'm just like damn so good and now season four oh my god it, we're, it feels like we're wrapping up a lot of the a lot of those questions that i mentioned earlier so season four is a different storytelling method for sure and it's so weird because i'm finally i'm finally at the age where i get to see other kids grow up and like it's like I it's like it's like what my parents were for Harry Potter. They're watching Daniel Radcliffe. They're watching Hermione and Ron grow up, and I'm like growing up with them. I didn't see that kind of growing up method with them, but now I'm seeing it with these kids, and I'm like, damn, I don't want to get old. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually funny that you uh, were bringing up horror stuff because uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast, recently uh, started actually adding more horror elements uh, into D and D with a uh, with a book called. Uh, castle ravenloft and it's just adds so many more horror creatures to it um we've actually dabbled into a little bit of a horror type element uh in the current season with uh imperial bioweapons project once uh i7 uh 1a also known as the sickness or project blackwing uh there was a book about an actual uh book about it called death troopers as well as a second book that actually pertains back during the time of the old republic uh, which this this the sickness was actually a, around four thousand six hundred and sixty five BBY, mm -hmm. and it was created by an ancient Sith Lord. So they have recently, and it, it it's literally zombies, but not normal zombies. They still have cognitive function. They can use the Force if they're Force sensitive. They can use blasters. They can use their lightsabers. It's it is nuts. And like the moment you get infected with that, it just seeps into your very core of your being and just corrupts you from the inside out mm -hmm. it's very fun okay no kind of reminds me of halo with the flood because the flood and halo are practically zombies but they also remain some form of cognitive function as well and it's twisted stuff so, very twisted stuff with that too jester uh so as this show moves forward because i you know i'm assuming it's gonna be a pretty good success you know it's got a big audience dnd does and, you know, you're talking about future seasons and, you know, so on. At, at some point, will you guys switch up the theme? So, for example, like, you know, right now it's like Star Wars themed. Like, let's say, you know, several seasons from now, you guys kind of like reboot and say, hey, now we're going to base it in whatever. Well, let me give you a little sneak peek into my brain, because I already have ideas in place for season three. Y'all know Kingdom Hearts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> How dare you say, unfortunately, it is a good, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's very complicated to understand the lore, I that, know. That was, that was the bait, Jester. I got exactly what I wanted. The actual <laughs> response of a Kingdom Hearts fan saying, actually, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love Kingdom Hearts. It's, it, it's a great, it's a great franchise. It, I love the franchise because it brought us some pretty banging music from 
Utada Hikaru. But that's currently the running idea that I have, and I've already been working on some of the background stuff. So okay. every season is going to be something different. Not okay. every season is going to intertwine with one another. Like after this season, we're going to start a whole new chapter into the thing. They're going to be new characters. There's going to be no real references to the previous seasons. Um, so like, like I said, I, I've, I've got plenty of ideas running around up there. Um, and eventually we will, uh, we'll break it down more. We, we may go back to traditional D and D for a season. Uh, I know Hobbs, for instance, he's a big monster hunter guy. I, I may I may or may not have found an entire functioning working system to build Monster Hunter D and D. Uh, th- the same with some other things too. So, like I said, it, it's 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 going to be a lot. There's going to be different things happening. I'm I'm just excited for it all at the end of the day. Okay. Sounds good. So, a quick question, a little bit unrelated. What was your reaction to Kingdom Hearts Four announcement? I'm excited. <laughs> that pause like was telling. Yeah. yeah, you look excited. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm genuinely excited. I, I love the way that it looked. I, 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 the, we're just based off. But I know it's pre-rendered, so it's probably not going to look like that at the end of the day. But I also know that they did this with Kingdom Hearts three, and we still waited seven years till we got it. So I don't have my. But, I don't have my high hopes, but I'm excited to know that they're continuing a story, even though they even though they said it's going to be a while. I can't wait for Kingdom Hearts 4 X 4 4 Y 4 2.7.9765 G and then Kingdom Hearts 4. Uh, I, I would have been I would have the whole 2.8 thing i would have been really content if they would have just added it as like a, a pre thing on kingdom hearts 3 to begin with like i i didn't need to know everything that was going on with aqua while she was traveling through the dark i, I you could have easily tied that into kingdom hearts uh 3 as like a beginning thing before you play the game would have worked perfectly just have fine. like a 60 second cut scene probably <laughs> I, I'm. I, I need to like understand what game I I was playing. It was Kingdom Hearts Office 365 subscription over one days or something like that. I actually do not remember. 365 over two, and that you, two. You, you play as uh, Roxas, Roxas and the organization members. Uh, and it was what a Game Boy game or a DS? It was actually uh, DS a, a game. DS game. Yeah, it was a DS game. Yeah, there's like some. Um, there's like Chain of Memories in there. There's like a few that. Other... That was a Game Boy game. I yeah. used to emulate that on my phone because I was bored and it was fun. But it was just a small retelling of the story of the story. But I, I liked I liked the final mixes because it actually added some kind of content that actually put a little bit of things back into sense. Um, and if you look at the original Kingdom Hearts games as a whole, um, it's it it, it it's it's not a story about Sora. It's not a story about Riku. It's not a story about Kairi. The entire first set of games that came out for Kingdom Hearts, it, it's a story about Xehanort. If you really look at it at the end of the day, it, it, it's about Xehanort and how he's trying to make the, 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 the Keyblade. Will Donald Duck wield a pistol in this one? Because I've, I've seen that a lot. Listen here, Donald Duck, regardless on how you look at it, he is the strongest character in all of Square Enix's history. You want to know why? This is like because those are fighting words with a say, lot of Final Fantasy fans out there. They're going to like... like... He's the only this is character... out saying Jar Jar Binks is a Sith Lord. No, there's actual factual proven to this. In Kingdom Hearts 3, Donald Duck casts uh, Zeta Flare, which is the strongest version of... Final Fantasy's flare techniques that the only other person to ever canonically cast that spell was a summon named Bahamut, like an going, actual yeah, god. Going it's like going Super yeah. Saiyan 5 or whatever. Like and, and the fact that fucking the, ripping the, it up. The, the, oh, the, god. the fact that Goofy said, no, don't do... means he's done it once before. <laughs> no, Donald, don't uh, do it. Yar, he, he's done it before, which means... He's the strongest why mage. Why don't they make a Kingdom Hearts series or movie? Seriously, it seems like it'd be it, perfect. 
it would work well for it, honestly. Probably the, because it, Disney doesn't know how to do anything Japanese. Well, um, let somebody well, from North and, Dakota do it then. I don't care. That and Square would have to spend more money just to be able to do that. Square's got they, so much money that they decided to spend it and waste it on things like Outriders. I don't know why. Uh, no, Well, no, I heard they're in big trouble because they lost a ton of money on that Avengers game. And uh, what was the other game they made that bombed? It wasn't Outriders. They made another game that bombed really bad, and that's why they sold all their Western studios, is because they needed quick cash. I know what game you're talking about. But it wasn't Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy actually did well. I think it Guardians did well. Yes, did okay. Oh. Guardians was a fantastic version. I forget which game it was. There's definitely another game. Yeah, it was that bad that we forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wasn't it the guy who made the Sonic Hedgehog game? Uh, that did bomb horribly, but I doubt it had a big budget, so I don't think it was like a massive, like, you know, we lost a ton of money on it. I'm sure they lost money on it, but... Uh, but I think <laughs> I read they lost $200 million on the Avengers game, which is significant, obviously. Oh, why yeah, they no, they that? they huh? messed that game up so bad. Well, I was going to say, why they gave, why Marvel gave the game to them just bothers me insanely. It's just like, why Square Enix? Like, did they do it for cheap? Did they do well, it because... And Crystal Dynamics had never made, like, a game-as-a-service style game, so it was an odd pairing. I'm not saying they're a bad developer, because they're not, but just choosing them, like you said, was just like... Like, you could see it being like, oh, let's give it to Blizzard, let's give it to Bungie, let's give it to... Somebody with, you know, extreme game as a service experience. I always find it, I don't like the way, I mean, I said it before, I don't like the way, like, Japanese storytelling is typically told. Um, Says the huge anime dynamics, fan. <laughs> Because they can never get, like, the mouth movement right, even in video games. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's just, like, it's always done so strangely. Crystal Dynamics kind of, like, did great, though, at Tomb Raider. But at the same time, like, it definitely had that, that eastern kind of development feel every time i watch shroud play or anybody else play i'm just like damn dude this is definitely a jrpg type of stuff this is a japanese developed game and it was like clearly written on the walls and i just don't i just don't vibe with it that much but that's just me it looked like trash let's just be honest graphically that game looked like game trash game. the the, the people like who trash. did the character models like no i'm sorry man. i'll admit I... I may own the game uh, on a, on a, on a couple of different platforms, <laughs> I have fun with it here and there. Um, especially after they did like a massive rework on it, it definitely feels better, plays better. It it's just when they first announced it, I was like, none of these well, characters look like they're yes. like the character they're supposed to look like. Not not even not even comparing it to the MCU. Oh. I'm talking comic book wise. I yeah. was like, eh. and they should have. I really think they could have gone a few different ways with it. They could have made it like, to make it like game as a service. That was their goal. So they could have done like a Diablo style game. They could have done like a Destiny style game. Obviously, they weren't going to go full MMO. Uh, a Marvel MMO just got canceled, by the way. Um, it was being developed by Daybreak, the developers of EverQuest, H1Z1, Planet Side. Um, but they didn't do that. They made this weird like. I feel like they tried to bridge the gap too much between like single player experience and like you know, kind of game as a service, and they just ended up with this weird, like, you played it, so, I mean, you could tell me better than, than I can describe it, but it, it didn't... Here, 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 here's the point that I like to talk about with, with uh, Marvel's Avengers. If they would, like, forget it as a games of a service. If they would have made it a story-based game, where you play as one character the entire time, at, just like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Now. Just like Guardians of the Galaxy. If they would have done it like that, Probably, probably would have worked way better. better. Totally yeah. I think and I'm glad you said that. I, I was literally thinking the same thing. So I'm glad we uh, agree with this because, like, the problem with like Marvel uh, content right now is that it's it's already so linear. Like, there's not much more you can expect to gain in a microtransaction, live service enabled con like a piece of content for a superhero. We know what they're capable of doing. We know what sure. they're capable of growing into, and we know that the trend, like, even through cinema, like. There's a progress to it, and we see that with Spy every goddamn superhero movie we watch. It's the same formula over and over. Doing that in a video game is significantly more personal because you get to control it. What the point of enabling like a live service game mode for superheroes feels like 
somebody in a like a boardroom was just like, hey, why don't we just keep trying to sell them the same character with different random scenarios each time? And like, it just doesn't make sense. I, I, we mentioned this before, like what would happen if like Marvel was uh, put in like Blizzard's hands? Like what kind of games would we want out of them? I said like a like a Diablo style game, but Diablo still has a linear story mode to it specifically. Um, and like you could still tell the same story, but the, the loot drops and stuff like that can be very specific to other things. It could be like Minecraft Dungeons or something like that. But like linear storytelling games, like you said, like with Spider-Man, uh, with like Hulk in the past, those were pretty good games too, actually. I'm going to say that out loud. Um, and as well as like Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just like these linear stories are just so much better for these kinds of characters and stories. Which Hulk game are you talking about? The original Xbox. Well, well, so I'm asking because there's the Hulk game that was based on the original movie, and then there was the better one. Hmm. Okay. That well, actually had. Some... The, there, there, oh. there, there, there was another one that had better destructible physics. Um, just it, it felt more like the Hulk, and then the Hulk movie game was just. Was it called Hulk okay. Smash? It wasn't Hulk Smash. It was uh, destruction, Insane. indestructible something. Oh, man, I gotta. I think I'm, it was just literally called Hulk. I remember renting it from Blockbuster. That new She-Hulk series looks awesome, though, right, guys? Shut up. <laughs> no, it's the uh, it, no, the uh, the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Really? Let me see. That... I'm double checking. Oh. It was based off the movie, right? No, no, no. That was the Hulk game. There was the 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 the, the better one that came out in two thousand and five. I remember playing it on my PlayStation 2, played more like the Hulk, felt like the Hulk, was the Hulk. I, I could rip a car in half and make it into a pair of gloves and beat the hell out of the Abomination. Marvel doing a Rolk series, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the movie one. Yeah, I like the movie one, though, but maybe it's because I was young. I had such glistening eyes to every piece of content in front of me. I find young. How old are you? I'm 28. I'm 29. Okay. Um, He's just saying that because I'm old. I'm 35. Hobbs is 36. You look fine. Fishing for compliments, Mayor. He said I look fine. I would. I would. I would. I would have never. I would. I would have never. When you say that to your wife, she's just like gonna tear your head off. Yeah, you look fine. All right. right, Let let me let me rephrase that. I would have never pegged you for 35. How about that? Uh, (laughs) It's all good. We need to get rid of the word pegged. I don't care how what kind of context it's like used in. We just need to get rid of it. <laughs> Listen, it's not my fault kids these days are degenerates that that associate things differently. <laughs> That's the, that was the quote of the podcast this episode. I love that. It's not my fault that kids these days are degenerates. Love it. Oh. <clears throat> I like the first, I like the Hulk movie game, but then again, that's just, like, like I said, it maybe it was different for me. I didn't exactly have a lot of video games growing up with growing up, so. Oh, I think we're uh, all in that situation. I, I I get what you mean. Like you played what you had in front of you, and you made the absolute best you could out of it because it was all oh, you yeah. had. Yeah, we all didn't have a lot of video games growing up, and I looked at a library of over two hundred plus when I was going a over kid. going over to your you know your neighbor's house to play the games that they had. Like, no, no, no. I, I, I personally had a library. Of oh, I know. I'm just saying that that was what a lot of us had to do back in the day. That's it was what like our, exciting. That's what privileged kids had to do, Jester. To go to your friend's house because they I had... am not privileged. I am far from <laughs> I was lucky enough to be able to get a single game each year in my house. Well, it, it depends on which house I was in at the time. Okay, fair. My parents divorced when I was two years old, but... That's what I'm saying. Like I having different. I remember my grandmother had you know certain games at her house that you know she had bought for the grandkids. I had certain games at my house. My neighbor had certain games. My cousin had certain games, and it was like depending on where you would go, it was like, oh, good, I get to play. You know, well, gyro, if I if I, wanted to, if, I wanted, if I wanted to play Mario Party, I had to go to my neighbor's house. So I was like 40 when that game came out. So if I wanted to eat, I had to go hunt and find it on my own. <laughs> That's not good. I drank out of a creek and smoked cigarette butts that other people had discarded on the streets. And I walked around and borrowed somebody's Netflix password so I could watch Stranger Things. I had oh, such a the... nicotine intake. My mom smoked when I was in her womb. <laughs> and now I have it. A... Actually, <laughs> a, a handshaking addiction problem. 
So I, I hate circling back to D, uh, Dungeons and Dragons talk, but uh, it's funny we're talking about superheroes because that's another idea I actually have in, in, in my mind. Like I want to do not not just like Marvel or just DC. Like I want to like superheroes. Like you can talk to Batman and then go meet Captain America for a cup of coffee. Then bring in Omni Man and he kills them all. Omni Man. Omni Man would Omni Man would get wrecked by Superman. I hate to break the news to you. I, I don't know. There's probably a good YouTube video about that. Omni Man versus Sup Superman. Uh, no, uh, it was Omni Man versus Homelander, and okay, Ho there's got to be Omni Man versus Superman one out there. Uh, and, and and no, uh, uh, Omni Man very strong. But here's the problem: Omni Man born with those powers. He ha he has a peak. Superman son. There, there's a version of Superman called Superboy Prime who oh, yeah. punched reality so hard that yeah. it brought people back to life. That it retconned the entire universe. <laughs> exactly. Uh, s there's Superman 1 million who lived in the sun for a million years and is literally an omnipotent being at this point. Like, he is on par with the gods of that universe. That's crazy. So, Superman has no power limit. Uh, that, the boys season problem. three comes out this week, by the way, guys. That was going to be my recommendation. Ooh. You know who else I, doesn't have a power limit? Love, Goku. Love the boys. Uh, Goku does not have a power limit either. Mm -hmm. No, uh, and, and that's that, that's actually the most interesting, thing, and that's what most Go, uh, Goku fanboys go to. Oh, Superman! Goku can beat anybody. Do you guys, remember that? Uh, oh, what's his name? Soldier Boy. Right. Put out that song called "Bitch, I Look Like Goku." <laughs> But but the fun thing I hate to break the news to you, uh, uh, uh Goku's creator Toriyama uh, was talking about Saitama. He was like, Saitama would probably beat him because Saitama is a joke character the entire time. I watched I watched this week. I watched uh, what was it? It was Doom 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 Slayer versus Guts from Berserk. That was like a twenty minute breakdown of who would win in a fight. Oh, so just pure rage versus pure rage with oh. an undying, with just undyingness between both of them? The guy said, the guy said, he's like, well, at the end, I think Guts would win. And I was like, yeah, Doomslayer has guns. Like, Doomslayer's just gonna, like, <laughs> run around and just, like, blast. I, Doomslayer's I got a BFG, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I, 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 believe me, I love Guts. I, he's one of my favorite characters, but it's like, I, I don't know about that one, you know. Some, some people just love too much to give in. Yeah. I when still people come say, to... I started to send it to you. You do need to watch who is more stronger, the Flood from Halo or the um the Necromorphs from Dead Space. I, that's mm, such an incredible an incredible good. comparison video. Oh, that's such a good video. I've seen that video. That's yeah. and the D&D campaign. Do it up. It it, it, it all comes the new to, game it, in 2023. It, 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 it would all come down to who right. gets the body mast first. Yeah. Uh, mm. Like who get who 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 gets the initial startup yeah. for the flood or the the necromorphs because the the flood will have issues possessing an uh possessing the necromorphs uh so they need to get different carcasses. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that like that it's such an interesting outcome because like there's no clear winner at the end. We all lose. Yeah. Well, between like the fighters, though, in terms of like between them, like at their most even, like I think it was like determined between like the two lore masters. It was like the flood who would technically win if they had that time to build up. They take mm -hmm. a little bit longer than the necromorphs. But in this case, necromorphs move te significantly faster um, oh, yeah. than the flood can. So it's just like, yeah, necromorphs would technically win. But at their both prime, Flood was deemed to technically be the winner for that. Oh because, no, one hundred percent. If you yeah. if you have like the the flood at their peak and the necromorphs at the peak, it doesn't matter how fragile each of the body uh, any of the bodies are. The flood will have military tactics um, and all that stuff because it it turns into a singular hive mind which they can relay throughout the entire thing. And the necromorphs, it's just need more flesh for the pile bring more well, bodies they're, they're both, no, sergeant they're johnson both comes scene, in and actually. messes them all up because they can't it, that doesn't matter because sarge exists sarge, sarge kills sergeant everything. johnson died by a light bulb i hate to break it to you mayor you don't know what you're talking about but in this case whenever it comes between necromorphs <laughs> like and a light flood, ball or a light bowl at, at their light bowl that's what he calls them uh flood i mean like they like both necromorphs and flood are able to actually become so huge they would be able to be the size of planets 
And yeah. the Flood have only gotten to that point once, and Dead Space with Necromorphs have gotten there like a couple of times. We saw the Necromoons and stuff like that at the end of Dead Space 3 DLC. It ruined the whole but, like, the, the, but whenever like the Flood get to at least one sized planet like of, of something, they can create another one within a matter of like minutes. Oh, so yeah. that's how much more powerful they were compared to Necromorphs. But they're it's... both kind of the same. They're both kind of the same. Yeah. At the end of the day, and, and honestly, I'd I'd love to see a fight between both of them break out in real life. I'd love to see Do Dead it. Space Four. Oh please, that'll happen. <sighs> that's this reboot is a the first step towards that for sure. Oh, that's God, gonna be that so such a fantastic time. I don't want it to be Isaac either. It can't be Isaac. It needs to be somebody else. Isaac yeah. has told his story. I think they'll probably. I mean, what do you think? Do you think they'll do the whole trilogy remake? Or do you think they'll just remake the first one and then kind of do like a whole new like? It doesn't have to be Isaac anymore. Like you said, it could be a whole new Dead Space game. I think that makes the most sense. We've seen yeah. it already happen plenty of times across yeah. many other games. I'd love to see how other people... Uh, I would love to see different perspectives of the various people and stuff like that. Um, uh, man. I would like to see the next step for like the, ne- like the whole new humanity humanity after Isaac. I think that would be really interesting because during Dead Space 3, we finally saw like the previous civilization, uh, you know, get consumed and technically put a pause on the Necromorphs uh, plans, basically, um, for that duration. And then we got to Isaac and then like all that happened. But the Necromorphs are smart and they know that they just can't keep consuming until there's absolutely nothing left. They do go on a break pretty much to let the next civilization take power and rise. So I would actually love to see you know, what the next civilization post-humanity that we knew with Isaac is going to do and how they handle everything. Because we already know, coming in, what the Necromorphs are capable of doing. So now seeing it through fresh eyes again would be really cool. I think it'd be really great to bring in, like, a new audience, despite the fact that we've got that remake coming up. I would like to see that new audience. That's just, like, very hopeful romantic right there, though, for that game. So that's just a shot in the dark. Throwing darts at the wall, see what happens in the lands. But that'd be cool. All right, guys. As much as I'm loving chatting with both of you, I am about to go in my pants. Uh, what are you going to do? What? Can you, can you be specific? Uh, is it going to no. be a little... Is it, is it going to go down the leg, or is it just going to be stuffing the back? I, I don't need to hear about this, because I, I have a steak, uh, salad, some asparagus to go yeah. eat still. There we go. Thank, thank you for saving me. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go play Fortnite, then. Okay, so Ooh, next Fortnite. week we'll be back. Next Monday we'll have E3 starting basically this week with Sony. So we'll be reacting to Sony's conference, getting ready for all the other conferences. Probably a bunch of leaks this week, and then uh, starting in the not too distant future, you'll see Mister Hooded Jester over here leading the way on this channel on Sunday nights at six six p.m. Uh, Central uh, with with the new show. So. Thanks for coming yeah, on the yeah. show, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, it thank you awesome. guys for having me. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk about it and get it out there. Yeah, and can and also you're our first like guest, right? That's He's true. Our, you, Jester is our first guest on the yeah. Beyond podcast, so true. soak it in. Yeah. Well, well, I, I mean, if you guys ever uh, want to get into the whole D and D scene, want to be players, I, like I said, we're, we're doing guest spots, and I'm I'm going to be losing two players here soon, so I'm looking to fill a fill a slot up. Uh, so. You gotta come to me. I'm not driving to Katie. No, no, it's all, it's all the internet. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'll let you know though. You gotta I mean, stranger if you, if you, things. That's it, your homework it, assignment. But if you actually do want to do physical, like I, I'll listen. When I have days off, and I, I'm, I'm not, I'm starting a new job here soon. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I moved down to Texas in the first place. Uh, I'd be more than willing to do actual live setups. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let you know. I definitely am interested in some D and D action. I've got plenty of books, hard copies. They're very heavy. You have the next Oh, you mean I can't read it on my Kindle? Listen, I, 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 I might have that, but we don't talk about it because it's yeah. locked in a lockbox. Yeah. Sounds good. It's a good plan. All right, guys. All right, hey, guys. Yeah, yeah. Later, guys. Oh, my this God. This is talk right now. Mayor, Jedi, and Hooded Jester signing off. We'll see you back here uh, next week. Thanks for watching. See ya. <laughs>